Views and opinions of any of the guests of After Hours AM are not necessarily the views and opinions of After Hours AM, its hosts, its staff, or any of its affiliates. Broadcasting live from the After Hours AM studio, Joel Sturgis and Eric Welcome to After Hours AM, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson. Hey, Eric, man, we have some great, great guests on tap tonight, don't we? Oh, man. I am so charged. First of all, Ash versus the Evil Dead is such a great show. It is so bizarre. And uh, I, I just saw this previous week, Sunday's episode, and oh, my God, it is unhinged. <laughs> it's but yes, really we good. have co stars. We have sidekicks and co-stars, Ray Santiago, Dana DiLorenzo, and Ted Ramey. It's going to rip it up. It is a really, really good show, and, and I love the show. I, I, I love it. I'm, As you know, I'm a really big fan of the Evil Dead, as you are. You know, we kind of grew up with them, really. Absolutely. You, you know, and so I remember the first time I saw Evil Dead film, I was a young kid, and it scared the hell out of me, to be honest with you. I'm thinking, oh, my God, really they're going to come get scary. me. You know, now you watch it today, and it's claymation, and it just seems tame compared to um, the CGI that we have today. But the acting holds up even today. So, I mean, you know, the acting, you don't realize how well it was acted until you're an adult and you go back. And you yeah, see because that's how all well they had was, going for them. Yeah. Like you said, it wasn't like real high production values or they had a you know, very, very low budget and uh, they just had to make do. They were all super young. It's really quite a story. If you guys are interested in kind of the overall Evil Dead story, you can go to americas-most-haunted.com. And I got a whole overview of the whole Evil Dead media empire. All three movies, Ash vs. Evil Dead, kind of run through them all, talk about them. I would say of the films, the second one is really the scariest. I thought they, so, too. They took the most frightening parts of the first one and, and amplified them. Yeah, and the third one was... It was more funny to me than it was scary. I thought and it had more a, adventure. Yeah, it had a lot more one-liners in there, you, you, you know, which was great because you can never get too many Bruce Campbell one-liners in your life. No, he's he's a master. You, you know, and especially like during the show, it's chock full of that kind of bravado in there. You know, like give me some sugar, baby, stuff like that. I mean, just I love the show. Um, of course, I own season one on DVD. That's how much I like the show. Ooh, yeah. Well, oh, yes. Uh, well, we would recommend that very highly. And season two is uh, there's been two episodes. So this week, this Sunday, they always premiere on Sunday, Sunday night on Stars will be episode three. And I'll tell you guys, you got to see that second episode. It is transgressive 
in ways I have never seen in film <laughs> or television. <laughs> yeah, there is one scene in particular that oh will uh, make you step back a minute and go, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. When he dukes it out with a colon. Oh, when he dukes yeah. it out with a colon. I think the last time I saw someone get assaulted by a colon on film, <laughs> you'd have to go all the way back to the reanimator in the, from the early 80s. Ah, uh, yes, I do remember that. Yeah, that was a scary movie, too. Oof, that one gave me nightmares. <laughs> oh, and, and a, another freaky, creepy star. Yeah, and that one. Uh, that's uh, What's his name? I can't think of it at the moment. The yeah, star yeah, I, reanimator. yeah, I forget the name, but uh, I'd like I'll to talk to him it. sometime because it had some weird scenes in that one, too. But anyhow, that was about the same time that The Evil Dead was coming out. So they were kind of in that same generation of films. I remember seeing one of them. I don't remember which reanimator it was because there's more than one. But yeah. I remember seeing one of them at the drive-in. And I, I don't think I've been to the drive-in too many times since I saw that. Yeah, That's well, you know, the was. first one is all that matters. The rest of them, eh, not bad, but it's the first one. Right. You know, for that series well, of movies that anyway. that is usually the case. That is it? usually definitely the case. And, and, of course, you know, during that time frame, there's a lot of other great movies that came out. Uh, but during the 80s, we had, well, we had uh, Nightmare on Elm Street came out. We had uh, Friday the 13th came out. So the 80s was a glorious decade for horror. Oh, it was. It's a lot of people's favorite. You know, yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, that's a that's a term. You know, eighty style horror, and it's usually used in a positive manner. I found the star. Jeffrey Coombs is the creepy reanimator guy. Yeah, he he played that really really well. <laughs> he sure. That's did. another one to check out after you check out the Evil Dead. Of course, uh, in my opinion, there was a remake of the Evil Dead. I don't know if you ever saw that re- remake there. Uh. Big guy. I haven't Come seen on, it Eric. because Ash isn't in it. Yeah, it. It is not very good, in my opinion. Uh, that's just my own opinion. But see, I'm looking at it from a biased point of view of being a big fan of the original because of the the characters and the acting and the one liners. This was horror, straight up horror film. I, I I mean, it wasn't bad for what it was. I mean, had it no, not been a remake, scary. had it not been a remake, it would have been a good film. But you know, if you didn't have anything to stack it up against. Right. You, you know, but beans that they're trying to to remake an icon is a hard thing to do without the icon. Yeah, exactly, without the icon intact. But they're the remake. You know, if if you want to get scared, of course, go ahead and check it out. But I definitely recommend if you have not seen the Evil Dead film, number one, go see it. Number two, I'd like to know what your rock is decorated with because I think just about everybody's seen at least one of them. Oh, by now, yeah. When I was working on that article, of course, we ran through, we watched the uh, Blu-ray of all three of the first three movies and, uh, you know, poured over them. The whole family watched, and we had a good time. It was one of, actually one of the few things we could all like and, and kind of for different reasons. But, you know, like Lily was like, oh, God, this is just, just going to be so dumb. Oh, oh so dumb. was she the cynical but, teenager going, ah. Oh. But she liked them. She liked them a lot. She thought they were funny and, yeah. and reasonably scary. Yeah, I uh, actually, I watched just the other night. I finally got to, uh, things have been crazy around here, of course, the Purge election year. I ah, sat yes. down and watched. I don't know. If you, have you seen that one yet? I haven't seen that one. I've seen the other two. You know, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't great. I mean, it wasn't anything that... I'm glad I waited for DVD because the Purge premise has always been a bit disturbing to me. That you well, know, it's that, quite disturbing. You know, that we'd legalize for 12 hours every crime known to man, including murder. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it's the third and final one, evidently, because at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, they abolish the Purge. Oh, good. So that is no longer um, an issue for America. But those movies, I like the first Purge the best of all three of them, Ethan Hawke. But then again, Ethan Hawke brought a, his acting chops with him. Sure. You he's, know, a, he's a heavyweight. He's yeah, the, and, and the rest of the films didn't have that you know, big star marquee power you, you know, that you would want to have in, in a role. But he brought it, and that was really good. And then I also saw The Magnificent Seven in theaters. That was really good. Was it? I'm not sure if you're a Western guy or not, Eric. I, I like Westerns. You this know, they're, one they're is a must-see. kind of been see. few and far between for the last 
well, many years. Yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan. Classic westerns, more modern westerns. Love Butch Cassidy. I mean, all the classics. Love yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it. Denzel Washington does a great job in that film, along with the whole cast. Big, big heavyweight cast, of course. You know, you have you have uh, uh, Pratt, which he played in. Um, what's his first name? It's escaping me at the moment. He was in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Chris. And I should know that because he's born right in my hometown, Virginia, Minnesota. He's a hometown he really? boy. Yes, he was. And uh, so Chris Pratt's in it. And then uh, it was just a really good movie. I definitely recommend it if you get a chance to see it. That and uh, what else? And then I also saw the new X Men. So I've been trying to get caught up here and all the new wow. movies are out. Uh, have a little around. more. Yeah, I know, right? And that one was pretty good as well. You know, the apocalypse. And, you know, I have a hard time sometimes enjoying. Uh, comic book movies because I grew up with the comics, you of know. Course. So you know, you read it as it came out when you're a kid, and then in your mind you stack it up to what was actually in the comic. And it's for me anyway, uh, as a comic fan, as a superhero fan, it very rarely lives up to what was in the comic. Yeah, well, it's kind of the same theory uh, as as a book. I, I think it really just comes down to books. And comics, uh, which are not the exact same thing, of course, but they're similar. They're very um, similar. Little literature. They're they're written. They're they're text literature. Yes, they they are two dimensional. Yep. And <laughs> and they don't and they don't typically move. Not so typically. It's one approach to um, entertainment, information, etc. And then film, of course, is another. So they're very different approaches and i find lots of times interestingly the closer a film tries to hew to the book or mm -hmm. or the comic for that matter usually the worse it is because they are yeah. different medium it's the ones where they take some liberties they do some compression they do sure. some rearranging the key is to convey i think the spirit of it yeah uh, in yeah. the film and if you can do that you don't have to necessarily slavishly follow, you know, the plot and the text. Kind of like what they've done, The Walking Dead. Very much, I would say, and you, I think that's know? part of why it's been successful. Yeah. Sometimes they follow it very closely. Other times they deviate completely. There's characters in the show that aren't don't exist. Yeah. Uh, in the comic, and so yeah. yeah, I think that's a very good example. Yep. Now uh, you do realize we're only a couple weeks out from the return of The Walking Dead. And I had actually forgotten all about it till I was reminded today about uh, Negan killing one of the, you know, the Walking Dead cast. And, of course, you know, the whole question, who do you think he killed? I still don't know who he killed. I mean, I have a guess, but, you know, it's just a guess. Well, as we get closer and closer. Who do you was, think there it was, is? There was something of a lull there, but now, yeah, we're back into the total frenzied speculation uh you know all of the guesses I, i've never let me put it another way i've never seen a guess that is not either glenn or abraham yeah and you'll see all these outlets all these websites and, and magazines and whatnot that that cover tv and certainly that cover the walking dead they'll do a list and they'll list all the characters who are lined up there <laughs> and and they'll put them in order you know in likelihood sure. of of their demise and glenn and abraham are always right there near the top the next few usually are a couple of the lesser known characters so it probably won't be one of the lesser known characters I would just think because they're lesser known characters i have a feeling and I'm sure that you don't agree with me, but I think it's be Norman Reedus. I, I think they could yeah, kill I've, him. I've heard that. I mean, you've 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 been talking about that because um, there are a lot of rumors that he is leaving the show. Yeah, and if like he's, he's leaving gonna, the show. Then they might as well kill him off. Obviously, he wants to concentrate on an other avenues of his career. You know, because I notice he's also been doing a lot of film. He he's got yeah, a few well, movies out there. Look at how. How much has his profile picked oh, up? Oh my gosh! We'll talk about Springboard. Oh my! You know Lord. he went from a, a minor role in Blade Trinity. I remember him in there just you know blink and you miss it role, and then he had uh, what was it uh, Boondocks Boondock Saints right? That's what yep. he's best known. Yep, for. that's what he's best known for. But really, he was never a powerhouse actor until The Walking Dead. 
I honestly, I recognized his face. I didn't even know his name before yeah. The Walking Dead. Yeah. I, I recognized his face. I've seen the Blade movies, so I, I had seen him in that. I, I, I've still never seen the Boondock Saints movies. I think there's two of them. And yeah. those are very, very popular. There's a certain, uh, you know, that they are a, a absolute cult favorite film. I, eventually, i got to get around to watching them. Eventually, I, I will, too. I, I've always, it's one of those movies or that you mean to watch. You just never quite get there. Yeah, you know, I for just me. haven't gotten around to it. You, so, you know. But anyway, you're talking about a guy who comes off as relatively young. You know, his yeah. character, um, emotionally anyway, shall we say, is is young. I mean, he's aged a, as the show has gone on. Sure. But certainly at the beginning, he was presented as an almost, you know, kind of adolescent type personality. The guy's in his late 40s. Mm, he is. He's almost 50 years old. And yeah. so, obviously, as an actor, you know, he's not getting any younger. And uh, I think I'm, I'm sure he feels that the time has come to take advantage of this huge leap in popularity. I mean, he yeah. he is still, uh, I, as far as I know, the single most popular character on the show. I, I would agree with you. He definitely is. I mean, he is the star. And so I would imagine... Money talks and other things walk, so maybe if they threw enough money at him, he might consider staying. My guess is this. the He is not the victim of Negan and the baseball bat at the beginning of the very first episode. He no. may, though, because uh, there's been a lot of other hints dropped, hey, why does everyone think there's only one major character who gets killed? You know? Yeah. So, I mean, certainly... Uh, they're they're probably due to cull some of these characters because they're bringing in all kinds of new characters. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, there's a ton of new ones. You oh, there all are. The, you got Negan and all his crew. Then you have uh, what's the guy's name with the tiger? That's a whole new place. Yep. It's yep. In, it, yep. In a whole other a whole other camp. Yep. In and of itself. Yep. You know? There's and, there's a lot going on. We've already there. met that other one. Yep. With uh, with Xander Berkeley who leads it up. I just remember his name from from 24. So I mean, you got four different camps, four different groups, four different settlements, and you know each one of them has a bunch of people. So it's probably they're probably due to thin it. I you know I I got to keep coming back around. I think it's probably going to be Glenn. More than the likely, obvious, the most obvious. I mean, that's what people have been telling me as well. It's going to be Glenn, but who knows? Who really knows at the end? But you know, we will just have to watch and wait and see, along with everybody else. Absolutely. You know what else is coming up now in only, what, three weeks? Barely three weeks? What's I guess that? that's about exactly. Halloween! That's right. We're only a few days away, really, from Halloween. Are you making preparations? I am. I am making preparations. I am going to take my kids out trick-or-treating, do all that kind of fun Halloween-y stuff, because it does fall on a weekday this year. Yeah, it's a Monday. Yeah, I know. That's a tough one if you got kids. It is. It is. It's it's too bad. It's too bad that Halloween is not uh, an official, you know, it's not a legal holiday. No, it's it not. And it is. I will, I've always thought they should make trick or treating the first Saturday after Halloween for the kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, well, something a little you know, it varies easier by by municipality. A lot of yeah. them. Well, a lot of them will only do it on the weekend. Yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of them do, man, for sure. But are you ready for it, though? What are you going to do? Well, my kids are getting older. Um, that's for sure. Really, only have one left. Uh, the the almost thirteen year old. He'll be thirteen in December. So he's the only one left as far as trick or treating. I don't know. He's kind of wavering. Oh, I'm getting too old. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, kind of the rule of thumb, I think, is is fourteen. Hey, man, my wife still trick or treats. Without kids. Well, she goes with the kids and she has a bag. <laughs> if she could do it without kids, she would. Oh, sure, if, it, if it was, have if you it was decorated yet? Because well, we oh have, yeah, oh yes, we have decorated. Yes, we're decorated. We're good to go. Oh, she decorated like on, I want to say it's September, uh, late uh, September. Because you I am kids. loath to to break that barrier and to yeah. do it before the first of October because it just seems too early. It is, but you know, the whole month. but now all of a sudden we're halfway through and we still haven't done it. We have little kids, and of course, you know they they get so excited for Halloween. You know, let's decorate, let's decorate. And then my two-year-old, Alexandria, is absolutely terrified of it. 
Screams, well, yells, cries. Right? You know, can't go down the aisles in the store. Oh, goes yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and there's a couple decorations around the house that she will not look at. Right, well, it's right. Do it. Back to one. <laughs> anyway, it's just hilarious. It's well, like, you I poor little you, kid. My, my, my son, you know, the <laughs> 12 and three quarter year old. It's not that long ago that he stopped being afraid of uh, some of the uh, more frightening props. Some of the them really are realistic. Halloween stores. Some of them are really realistic. Oh, you know, I don't, I don't blame them. Everything and the ones that move. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I know last night we had uh, Corvus Nocturnum on the show, and he's author, publisher, lecturer about vampires, zombies, a whole bit. But we were doing the show last night, and I decided to... <laughs> I got some grief for this. I, I you, do you remember the case in Germany where the guy put out basically in the German version of Craigslist for someone to come get eaten by him? Remember that case? Yes. Oh, yes. I read that in detail last night. Uh-uh. What he did, and of course, you know, my wife listens to the show and she says, "Did you really have to go into that kind of detail?" And I said, uh, "Honey, it's, it's in the it's, police report. It's brutal." And it was very brutal. In fact, I had to. You know, we talk about serial killers all the time on the show. We have Clarissa Cole on, and we talk about Ed Gein and the bad of the bad, and we go, that was the darkest story I have ever read myself aloud on the show. And and, and the darker it got, the harder I found myself to read it. It was like, oh, my God, I cannot believe anybody. I mean, you process it while you're reading it, and you stop yourself and go, wow, how much deeper can it sickening? How much more sickening can these people be? It it is the depth of depravity. You don't get much more depraved. Yeah, because um, we were talking about you know we're touching on serial killers and stuff. I mean Steve Asher and and Steve. You know we were talking and I said, ah, you know he was talking about his time in the prison. What it was like being a prison guard. I said I got one for you. Listen to this. And so I read it. Oh, I wish I wouldn't. Have. I don't. You know what? Ignorance is bliss. Oh, I know. You I know. know? Well, didn't they finally, I mean, it came out uh, last year. Didn't they finally release transcripts or something? Yes, yes, and that's why I, that's what I uh, our, yeah. the accessed online was the transcripts right. of his, uh, you know, the actual court case, the what he had said in court and right. what was going on. Yeah, it's, and, oh. it's kind of unbelievable. And then, you know, if you're doing a search for it, then uh, unfortunately, inevitably, uh, you know, pictures come up yes. whether you want to see them or not. Yeah, yeah. Don't look at the pictures. If you do go looking for that case, do yourself a favor. Ugh. Don't Ugh. hit the images on Google. Whatever you Too do. Much. Yeah, don't do that. If you want to sleep tonight, do not hit those images. Uh, it's it just shows you. I mean, and like you said, we we talk with Clarissa regularly, and and uh, uh, she shares some of her articles with us on on the America's Most Haunted site. And I know it all bothers her, but she's also kind of used to it, mm-hmm. and she's able to sort of, I think, separate herself from uh, from the emotion of it to a certain extent. But then, of course, we know that she's empathetic as well. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting that, her approach, but I some of it just shocks me. I have it, to it does. I don't think I could find any empathy for a guy that puts an ad out on Craigslist or their version of to find victims to eat. But you, can you, you imagine know? the guy who responds? Well, that's that's the funny part because you know, in court, the guy's like, "Hey, here's our contract. It's in writing. He gave me I, consent to eat him." I was honest. I was honest. He knew what he was here for. This is what we want to do. You know, how was it murder when he uh, gave me consent to do so? Right. And and the end, they only could give him five years because it was aiding a suicide, basically, is what they hit him with. Right. And I don't even know what the laws are about that in Germany. There's some countries where he might have gotten off. Well, yeah, I, I know he was keeping... God, I, I can't believe I'm diving back into this. But he was keeping parts of the guy on hand for several weeks, so to speak. <laughs> on hand. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> but anyhow, that's just totally disgusting. Let's talk about something more fun and more awesome before we're, we're done here. you got to tell us about your time at Scarefest. We uh, never yes, did we talk, talk about, about it. that last week. We kind of forgot. Uh, it, it was fun. You know, it kind of takes the whole weekend, of course, and... 
Uh, it really starts Thursday night. There's a party for the speakers and VIPs and whatnot, and we couldn't get down there for that. I, I would have rather gone to that than anything else, probably. But uh, we did get down. We, we left. We stayed at Friends with friends of ours uh, that go all the way back to, to college for me down in Cincinnati. So we got most of the way there Friday and had a lot of fun hanging out. And then we made it down to Lexington, Scarefest itself, on Saturday. And boy, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, I huge, bet. huge, huge convention center, the Lexington Convention Center, just chock full of all kinds of interesting, bizarre, weird vendors, all kinds of celebrities, all kinds of horror stars are there signing autographs, taking pictures, doing what they do. Did you and get any they, pictures taken with anyone that you want to get pictures taken with? No, because we were kind of in a hurry and I didn't have that much time because then Saturday night, see, was the as you know, world's yeah. largest ghost hunt to celebrate the very first, the inaugural National Ghost Hunting Day. So we kind of had to get ready for that and get involved and see what was going on. And there was a presentation kind of in the one big main room where they had the dance party and whatnot later that night. Uh, it's kind of kind of the main entryway. Uh, it looks like it's also maybe like a big uh, central food court kind of thing because it's yeah. attached to a mall as well. Anyway, so you know we were being introduced and gave little talks about that to the people who were there, and then we had to get uh, into the room itself. I wasn't that directly involved with the procedure, but mm -hmm. I was observing and talking to people and. You know, kind of met all kinds of fun, interesting people. Oh, I people. bet you did. Met Brian Cano in person sure. for the first time. I met Steve Gonsalves, who, oh my God, have you seen how much weight he's lost? No, I have not. He He's lost like 50 pounds. Wow, man. He is very, very lean. I don't think he should lose any more, but he looked great. What a nice guy. We chatted for quite a while. Uh, had a lot of fun talking to him. Kind of, and, of course, all the people who are directly uh, involved with the National Ghost Hunting Day. So, yeah, uh, to see it in operation, it was only two hours between, uh, I guess, 10 and midnight. Mm -hmm. And it was fascinating. They had uh, several screens set up in this room. And basically, they were just taking the live feeds from about 50 different locations. I think there ended up being a total of 73 groups participating worldwide mostly in the u.s but several other countries as well and so uh, about 50 of those 70 or so uh were participating in the live feed so meaning they had a camera uh with them and they did it all through uh facebook live and yeah. so it was just switching uh between naturally of course there were some tech technical glitches as oh there yeah always are under those kinds of circumstances when you're trying to pull in you know, video feeds through the internet from 50 different locations. But it was really very fascinating to see how it worked and see what people were doing and see all the different groups, and they all seemed to be having a good time. And then kind of the overarching thing, as we had talked about when we done previews of mm -hmm. it, was uh, was Brian Cano was uh, conducting a experiment, literally worldwide experiment, where they were sending out various messages and um they were giving them to each group has to have a medium and sure. so the, the the whole point of it was is there such thing can we get evidence for a collective consciousness and the very preliminary reports i haven't talked to brian uh, now in, in uh, at least a week or so but uh, just a few days after the event it looked like there really are some very interesting results that Very came cool. from that experiment and that's all going to be revealed you know kind of the final yeah what happened uh, on halloween itself on very the cool 31st. sounds like it was an awesome time lots you know, of fun very very, very cool yeah, i'll, I'll have to go next fun. time i'll have to make it down there next time you should and then on sunday i presented my music and the paranormal presentation i bet that went over really well i bet that was a lot of fun to watch it was a lot of fun let let me let me give you a small clue which sure. i had sort of feared but i was choosing to ignore if you're going to be a speaker at an event that's all weekend yeah don't do it on sunday why is that the crowds are smaller ah gotcha okay because sunday is the wind down day Sunday is the get the hell out of town. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, so next time, do it on Saturday. Those who were there were very appreciative, and uh, people with Scarefest Fest itself 
who saw it were very complimentary. They said, wow, we think that would really work with a nice big crowd, you know, yeah. hundreds of people. And it's yeah. very interactive. And, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And I got to play at the end, you know, it, was, it had to cut it short a little bit, but I did, I guess I did, uh, a medley of, uh, four songs at the end. So that was lots of fun. Well, that is and pretty cool, yes, man. Overall, very successful. Well, good. I'm going to have to get down there next time. Go hobnob with them. You should. You it know, is, it is, it's never the same. Uh, or I should say it's always different when you meet people in person. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. We got to run a break here. When we come back. You're America's most haunted headlines. Don't go anywhere. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope. It's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Anavar Media LCC is a dedicated team of professionals committed to helping business development scale and protect their websites, mobile applications, enterprise software solutions in the Northeast Ohio area. Locally owned since 2012, our client-centered values truly sets Anavar apart. Contact us today to learn how you can get 25% off your first project. Call them at 234-380-4852. Again, that's 234-380-4852. Or visit them at www.anavar.com. Again, that's www.anavar.com. Sure, when it comes to sex, you're responsible. But now they're marketing big size condoms. And frankly, you'd need a belt and suspenders to keep one on. Well, don't be embarrassed. Hot Dog House now offers regular size condoms with big size package names. Bob, you dropped something from your wallet. Oh, my God. It's Here. my... Here. Oh, the Hindenburg. The only kind I use. Order your regular size condoms from Hot Dog House with names that give you confidence. The Jolly Mean Giant, Cruise Missile, Pikes Peak, Super Dome. Only you'll know the real story before a while. So, uh, why is there a munchkin riding in the Hindenburg? Hi, Tom Bodette. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips, and whoa, did not need to see that. <clears throat> I'm Tom Bodette from Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Do you have a question for our guest tonight? Don't feel like calling the show? Not a problem. Email those questions to afterhoursam at gmail.com. Again, that's afterhoursam at gmail.com. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. Welcome back to After Hours AM, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson. And it is time for America's Most Haunted Headlines. Boy, we got all kinds of cool, freaky stuff going on. I got to tell you. So, my friends, 
It is time to go to Twitter. Whether you belong or not, simply yes. head on over to Twitter.com, and we are at AM Haunted. That's the America's Most Haunted feed. And you can follow us. You can retweet. You can like. You can reply. You can do any gosh darn thing you Be want. Be one of us. Follow along. All right. Great story in our partners, our partner site, The Lineup. And they got a really great this goes all the way back to the um, not even the late 1800s, kind of the like 1870s is when this was going on. Uh, I didn't know about this story. Apparently, it's very, very famous. Uh, the girl, an 18 year old girl named Esther Cox, and it's one of the most witnessed and documented cases of spirit possession really? ever. Really? Wow. Yes. Esther Cox from Amherst, Nova Scotia hmm. in the 1870s. I mean, dozens of people saw all this activity. Very creepy stuff. Wow, that is creepy. I've never heard of that case. I hadn't either. Well, I'm so, have to look it up. Uh, we got a picture of her, good old Esther. She and her sure house. looks like a happy person there. Look at her. Well, wow. she, <laughs> Man. she looks a little plagued. They were not very happy people back then, were they? Whenever I see an old picture like that, they, they all look angry. To smile. They I know. To smile. Well, they weren't supposed to smile. Oh, and part of it, you know what part of it was? They didn't want to show their teeth. Really? Okay. Because okay. everyone had bad teeth. See, I thought maybe it's because it took forever for the picture to take. And so they get mad at the photographer. <laughs> and by the time it did take, they're like, what the hell? Jeez. You know, it, was, it, was, it was much more formal. Uh, photography was much more formal back then. So if you were sitting for a portrait, y you were not supposed to smile. You were supposed to be your, your most serious wow. self. Man, I just I thought think. maybe they had bad indigestion or something. It's, it was a combination of that, and an awful lot of people were embarrassed uh, about their teeth. Yeah, that's what you just said. That the te Well, I could see that. Dentists were not exactly around every corner like they are today. Right. You know. So true, so true. So check that out. We got a, we got a link to the story on the lineup, and that's a good one. Very, very, very interesting. We have one from America's Most Haunted, America's Dash Most Dash Haunted, John Lennon. Rosemary's Baby and the Ghosts of the Dakota. Why is okay now? How is Rosemary's Baby intertwined in this? That was a movie. Uh, uh, yes, it was a movie. Yeah. Uh, the it was shot at the Dakota. I did not know that either. Wow. So, so the building that they live in, you know, the family, the, yeah. the couple uh, in Rosemary's Baby, and all the act, basically all the action takes place in that building, and it was shot at the Dakota. Really? Well, that was a scary movie. Oh, still is. Scary. Oh, it really it's, is. It's freaky because it's as all hell. you know, it's psychological and it's and it's religious. It's yeah. really frightening. Well, speaking of scary, have you, have you been watching American Horror Story lately? Sure, have. that is ramping up. It is nuts, Oof. nuts, and there's been some gross scenes. Hasn't I'm there been? You. Oh, wow. Uh, but uh, Kathy Bates says the butcher. I know I mean, that is. She is the most terrifying character. Maybe ever on that show, and there have been a boatload. Of there have been, characters. and she played the in last year's episodes. Hotel, I thought she did a great job. She's doing a better job this year. Oh, she is absolutely horrifying. She is really frightening. Yeah, we've been talking about it. My daughter, uh, the almost seventeen-year-old. In fact, she'll be seventeen Sunday. Yay! Happy hey, birthday. happy birthday! So, um. She's been watching it, and you know, of course, the way she does it is is binging. Although oh yes, year, she, she's watching it in in real time this season. But she got caught up with all the previous seasons by binging. Wow, that's a on, lot of binging. On Netflix. Oh, it's a lot of binging, and it's all horrifying if you watch them all in a row. Yeah, you know? yeah. You get a little anyway. Horror she and I agree, uh, and I'm hearing this from a lot of them that this season is the most like the first season, and it's yeah. the scariest. And it's a lot of people's favorite since the first. It's definitely my favorite since the first. I like the way they played off, like uh, almost like a episode of Paranormal Witness. Oh, that part's great. You know, I, I like that. I like that format that they got going. And you know, that's changing. Really? Yeah, what? we're coming up on. Uh, he's been teasing all along, Murphy, the yep. creator, Ryan Murphy. He's been saying, okay, episode six, everything changes. Oh, I am. I cannot so, wait to watch it. It'll be good. So, in essence, we saw. You know, kind of the ending uh, as they got away from the house, right? At the yeah. end of this, uh, well, last night yeah. episode, yeah. Uh, we saw them leave the house. So that kind of wraps up 
that portion of it. So now uh, we don't know what's going to happen. What we saw in the previews is uh, the guy who had mostly just been a voice. So he was the director or the producer of this reality show, right? Uh, yeah. Or, or of the show where the quote unquote real people were appearing, talking heads, yep. telling their tale. So now, the, uh, and the actor's uh, Cheyenne Jackson. So uh, it looked like they're shifting kind of a meta thing. Now, now we're going to be following what happens after the filming of that reality show is over. Okay, so now we're going to shift now into real time, so to speak. So to speak. And yes, we're, exactly. we're going to see the aftermath of their lives since they exactly okay exactly. okay i'm following and, now and, and maybe this hasn't even happened yet so i mean we're going to actually see it happening in other words real time so far has been um seeing excerpts and clips yeah from this tv show as they're making it yeah you know and yeah. it's always it's so ironic and hilarious how much think about it in the real world would they put remotely that much time and effort and star power into the recreation. No, no, they would not. You get the, you get the <laughs> no, the not known actors like we like get. You know, you know, very in it like an yes, industrial picture. You know, here it is. Here's the show. Here's the story. Let's get some semi decent actors in there that can overact just a little bit. Get them in there. Let's get it all done within a half hour. And, and think of the sets, you know, you have yeah. that huge woods and you got that house, yes. you know, all of that is supposedly taking place in the recreation. Wow. So anyway, it's funny and, and it's, it's really weird, but I, so far they've made it work. And now apparently our just, our minds will be blown as we shift to, you know, quote unquote real time. And, yeah. the, and the people who we saw rarely uh, as the talking heads, as the quote unquote yep. real people, I think maybe now we'll be following them. That's just my guess. I, I sure hope so. It, it'll, it's been really good so far. I've been watching on demand. Terrifying. I've been wa catching up on demand, of course. So I haven't been able to watch it as it's been airing, but I have been catching up on demand. And I'll have to watch the latest one tomorrow. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you got to get that one. I got to get that one, man. It up yeah. Some, yeah. Super weird creepy stuff yeah man. yeah don't don't kill it for me though yeah you know, I mean, you're nothing. doing a really good job not doing it so far but yeah it's uh my lips are sealed. I, I, yeah yeah uh, okay going down i noticed the headline it could not not read drunk minnesota man hunting yes, zombie. I knew you were gonna like what that the one. heck man what's going on there all right, so a 24-year-old uh, uh, Minnesota man was apparently drinking quite heavily all through the evening, and by now it was 5 a.m. Oh, boy. And he headed out apparently quite seriously with his AR-15 oh, rifle no. armed with, get this, specifically tipped bullets <laughs> to kill zombies okay he now, bought these bullets <laughs> to kill zombies i have seen these bullets for sale at our sporting goods stores green tipped for yep they actually show zombies and, and it's really what it is a marketing ploy. you know you can buy 30 30 rounds stuff like that called zombie ammo and stuff yeah, it's just a big marketing ploy but get to, to hear this moron running around want to hunt zombies after you've been drinking all night yeah, so it's wow. five in the morning. Five Apparently, in the morning. He, he thinks he sees a zombie. Well, sure, you know, maybe it's another drunk person. <laughs> so he sees a zombie, and he starts shooting. One of the bullets goes through a window of his neighbor's house and hits the wall right above his no way. sleeping head. Oh. Almost killed his neighbor asleep in his bed. Wow. That, wow, man. Wow, that is crazy. I, I like the license you put on here. Yeah. The, yeah. Mini, the, the Minnesota official a government issued zombie license. Yeah. Oh, you my think, Lord. You think that's real? No, it's not real. It can't be real. At least I don't hope it's real. I mean, I, we've seen a lot of weird things in our state. Come on. We did have a wrestler as our governor. So true. You know, that's so, true. you know, just, and just a comedian saying. as a senator. We, we do. We do. And, and Al Franken, man, I, I, I've i sat with him several times and talked with him. And oh, I, I think I, he's turned out to be. I always want to stop and say, and gosh, darn it, people like me. <laughs> yes. It's so weird. You never know. I mean, I guess you can't prejudice people by what their profession is. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, what I, I mean, think, you know, wh- whether you like him or not uh, politically, Ronald Reagan certainly is considered a successful president. Yeah, they sure quote him a lot, don't they? They sure do. At least the Republicans. Yeah, 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 oh but yeah, not only the Republicans. No, you know? no, and uh, uh, he was a relatively successful, uh, you know, again within political limitations, governor of California. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, but we've had a lot of weird ones with Jesse Ventura. And oh boy, that was four years. I'm glad I didn't. You know, <laughs> thank Talk God, thank God, theories. I was not in Minnesota at that time. Uh, but uh, uh, wow, you know, we had him, Al Franken. I think what happened is he retired as a comedian. and He wants something to do. What sure. am I gonna do? I'm gonna run for. Go- I'm gonna run for political office. That's what I'm gonna do. Gosh yep. darn it, because people like me. And he's been reelected, hasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's been going strong. He's at least on his second term. Yeah, right? he's second or third term anyway. Huh. He's been doing all right. I know we are. Uh, my state anyway is. Um, I'm sure you've read this. Is dumping Obamacare? Can they? Yeah, because it's just not. Uh, I mean, how, legally can they? legally? I guess they can because uh, Mark Dayton came on TV, of course, our local TV. And it said it's just not politically or it's not um, financially feasible. It has raised rates so ungodly. And yeah. it's limited so many people in their health care that our state is. You see, our state has always been one of the uh, spearheads of health care, mainly sure. because we had the mail. I mean, the mail has always been right. the gold standard of health care. And everyone pretty yep. much follows what the mail does. And so the mail was very influential in getting you know, uh, making their thoughts known on this issue. And really people now, according to what I've heard are literally dying because they cannot get affordable health care. Well, I mean, still it's, you can't turn anyone away and that's no. why poor people end up, you know, uh, or, or uninsured people are not just poor uninsured people end up always often in the emergency room because you can't yeah. turn them away. You well, know, no, so no, they go to no. the emergency room for, for non-emergencies, for yeah. chronic yeah. problems, and it, that's more expensive yeah. than preventive. Yeah, it really is. It's a thorny, thorny matter. It, it On really the one is. Hand, you got twenty million plus people who were not insured before who are now insured. On the other hand, yes, there are some problems. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing of it is, is, is what has created is either you have to be really rich or really poor to get really good coverage. Yeah, you, you know, you know, is what's and kind of created that, way, that, that way vacuum. About a lot of things. You know? Yeah, it is, it is, but it's really brought it out in this particular situation. At least that's what was cited, is that that there's a big disparity for the middle class. The middle class is having it has been having a rough, rough mm. time. This has been a very poor uh, about fifteen twenty year period. For it's the been a class. very hard time for the middle class. You know, and uh, thank God most of us have found a way to get by if you're middle class. And, and thank God we are middle class because we're yeah. supposed to be living the American dream in the middle class. You know, I, I agree. You know, and at one time we had the largest middle class by proportion in the world. And yeah. I don't think that's true anymore. No, I, I, don't, I don't think you're right. I think it's shrunk by leaps and bounds in the last 20, 30 years. You know, just real briefly on the political thing, I, I get it. I really do. I want to yeah. make sure people understand this. I understand where a lot of this anger that has fueled the Trump campaign comes sure. from. I really do. And I don't blame people for responding to having their concerns voiced. Mm-hmm. So I get that, you know, and and their concerns are legitimate and they need to be addressed. And if it does end up being Hillary, which right now it certainly appears as if it will be. Yeah. I ho- I hope she takes this very seriously and realizes that there is a very large swath of the nation that is very very concerned mm-hmm. about where we are and about their futures and about the way things are going. Well, uh, uh, and- exactly. I mean, look at the turnout. I know we're not doing headlines right. Now. Sorry about that, but I I think that we're touching on something really important right now. Oh, look at fine. the turnout of Bernie Sanders. Oh yeah, uh, I mean, I mean that speaks volumes because I mean, my, and he's a socialist exactly, and so that spe- he, that really spoke volumes to me. There's a lot of unrest in this country, both financially, politically, and racially, that I have never seen in my lifetime so bad. Uh, and I know you have seen it so bad because you grew up in a more turbulent time. 
Yeah, from, I I was there. I mean, I was a kid, but yeah. I was there for the '60s yep. and into the into the early '70s. Really, the Vietnam era is really what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Things I'm, changed yeah. pretty dramatically when when the war was over in, in the mid '70s. Yeah. Things did change quite a bit. Yeah. But leading up to that, I mean, it was a a very fraught time, and you had a ton of division, and you had violence, and you had protests, and you had all kinds of problems. And it it was really kind of the last time you had a very clear generational divide Mm -hmm. that's changed i think for the better but yeah so it was i think these things generally are cyclical but yeah it's a very tough time right now and i suppose i didn't realize uh how many people are upset and worried and angry uh and and for legitimate reasons I, i was not aware of it until you know i followed the campaign and as you say it it applies equally to Bernie Sanders, uh, as it does to Donald Trump. I yeah. Think. Well, Donald Trump, man, you know, this newest revelation going beyond talking now action, uh, allegedly, of grabbing women. Right. Is, is horrible and deplorable. And I don't condone or advocate that at all. And, and um, we're watching him as a campaign implode in front of our very very eyes but what it does at the end though is it cheapens our country it cheapens a lot of things um a because he starts screaming you know it's rigged it's 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 hillary making this up or that up right but on the other side we have hillary and i'm speaking for what i've heard I, i'm not i'm a more i'm a more a political right now <laughs> i'm a political right now because i could care less about either one of them at the moment on the other hand, we have Hillary doing the devious things that she has allegedly done and has been found to be doing. Yeah. I think that I we're, in a, I we're in a very bad, hard spot in our country. And I think whoever wins, no matter who wins, has got to be a open, honest, and really, truly have the American people as their best interest, you know, our best interest at heart, or our country may get demoted to being a second world country before you know it. Well, I, I hope not. And I, I think that's unlikely. Uh, I would, I'm optimistic. So I would like to think that if it is Hillary, which again, it, it looks like it's going to be just based on polls. And as yeah. you say, the <laughs> self immolation oh. of the Trump campaign, but nonetheless, if it is her, I, I hope that she is able to really look herself honestly in the mirror you know 70 year old woman look look yourself in the mirror come to terms with the fact that you have tendencies to be deceptive and that is something you need to absolutely address and hopefully rectify i think she's plenty empathetic i think her care about concern about children going back decades and decades i think that's real i think she does feel a calling i think she does want to be a public service, I, a servant. I don't think she's in it, mostly anyway, for the wrong reasons. So the, I don't have that problem. I know a lot of people do. They think she's in, just in it for the power. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's not my problem. But I do have a problem, absolutely, with the tendency toward uh, deception. All right. So I agree. That's important stuff. And yep, we haven't talked yep, a whole lot about it. But we got a couple more. Let's, let's, let's do her, man. a couple more let's in do her. here. Did you know, speaking of vampires, as you were mentioning uh, that you talked about on the show last night, there is a museum of vampires in Paris. Really? There is, huh? I did not know one even existed. Yes, a vampire museum in Paris. And there's some cool pictures. This is from uh, one of our favorite sites, the Atlas Obscura travel site. Lots of cool pictures. Uh, we, here, here's uh, the picture we have up on uh, the Twitter feed, which is at AM Haunted, the America's Most Haunted Twitter feed, is of an old school vampire killing kit. It's Check a kit. Thing yes. Out. Well, you got every good vampire hunter had a kit. Of course. You know, you can't go out there without your kit. That would be like going out naked. That's right. Or, or hunting zombies without an AR-15, evidently. Uh, and green tip bullets. <laughs> well, yeah, and that glow in the dark. You got to have those. Sometimes. You have to have those. So, yeah, that looks very interesting. And uh, next time I'm in Paris, I'm checking that sucker out. It looks really, really cool. I'd love it to see like that. It's like a lot of fun. I think it's a combination of, uh, as far as the museum in, in, in total, it's a combination of 
you know, sort of pretending what if vampires were real, but then it's also looking at the the real historical the lore. setting of the vampire yeah. myth and how it arose and yep. how it was handled, particularly in, in France, obviously. Yep. yep, because they really did not like their vampires up there. No, Europe, uh, especially Eastern Europe, yeah. uh, has really, really had, had issues. But all of Europe, and really, actually, historically, most of the major civilizations had something at least like a yeah. vampire. So that leads you to believe, is there some there could have been kernel some of truth there? There could have been something to it. Is Who there knows? A kernel. A kernel. Of truth. All right, next picture. Oh, boy. Oh, the not creepy... Clowns. Clown outbreak. It has now gone international. Now, did you hear that Ronald McDonald is taking a break? Yes. <laughs> McDonald's has reined him in. Yes. They don't want him yes. To get shot. Yes. They grabbed Stab. him and grimaced. They took him off the street. Tell him, you know, for your own safety, you got to get out of here. You know, just, just take, just go on vacation. And how nuts is this? I was just looking at a list of, of uh, costumes. And what is selling the most? Creepy clowns. You, you know what's up like 300%? Creepy clowns? Clowns. I bet. And that is so stupid. It is so stupid. Now is not the time. No, this is the bad time to go as a clown. Right now is not the time I would choose to dress as a clown. <laughs> Nor I. Or a zombie, <laughs> evidently. Don't want to do that either. No, not in Minnesota. Not in, no, not here in Minnesota. They'll, they'll shoot you, evidently. They'll, they'll just pop a cap in your <laughs> nose. Your, yes, yes, they'll pop a cap in your undead butt. As it were. Yes, as it were. <laughs> All right, really great story. And believe it or not, m popular mechanics, if you can believe it or not, and they trace the whole history of the haunted attraction industry. How really? interesting is that? Yeah. Wow, man. I'm going to have to read that because last year, of course... We, we did, covered it thoroughly. We, we did like four shows. That I mean, three or four shows where we really got into the nuts and bolts of these attractions, right? And the I found it to be of very. Halloween. And of course, with a focus, a particular focus on haunted attractions, we sure did. Yeah, I found it to be very, very interesting. To talk to these folks about how it you was, run them in, uh, in the business. Yeah, I did too. I, I liked it a lot. So anyway, this article that we linked to uh, in Popular Mechanics, it. It traces specifically in America the uh, there there were haunted attractions. Believe it, I had no idea this was true. All the way back to the 1930s. Really? Huh. Yes. Well, well, you know, I suppose P.T. Barnum, those guys. You know, maybe during Halloween they'd put something on. Well, I guess the way it started was it, originally it's it, what it circled back to for a lot of people. It was very DIY, and it was in people's actual. Sure homes or yards okay but but it but some of them ended up you know charging right because yeah. it costs well a yeah it costs a lot of money those things up that's right it does cost a lot especially these days it costs a lot of money oh hey oh. I'm, I'm just watching on travel channel you know every year they do the specials on you know halloween top 20 stuff like that and and they're showing some of these home haunters oh, well there's a whole movie by the way dedicated a documentary about yeah. home haunters uh, you know, and these people, they start working on next year the day after Halloween. I mean, yeah, they do. I saw that documentary. Round. Yeah, I, I saw that documentary, man, and they are just dedicated to it. Fanatical. And they work on it year round, and it costs a lot of money. It takes, think of all that time. So anyway, back to the 30s, people were, were setting up, you know, haunted attractions within their houses, haunted houses. Within their homes, I think by the '60s, by the '60s, it had been taken up by as as a uh, as a civic thing, and you had the various uh, you know JVs and yeah. uh, JCs, I should say, and uh, various civic groups were putting them on as a way to raise funds. That's how I first heard about them. Was all these civic organizations putting them on back in the '60s and into the '70s? Well, I suppose you know it was for fundraising. Yeah, exactly. You know, and of course we all went to that scare as kids, and you know, hollow trick or treating almost became something the law community's got away from because of the rumors of people getting hurt and this happening, that happening. Right. I'm, I'm glad that Halloween's come back in a big way, and uh, 
I got to tell you, man, I dropped like 75 bucks in my, my kids' costumes the other day. And I thought, wow, man, Halloween yeah, has gotten expensive. Uh, it's been expensive for a while. But, yeah, those costumes, every year it seems like they go up. That's why you're getting a lot of people now buy them used, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. What would I buy? Uh, a Darth Vader costume for my nine-year-old. And then uh, my two-year-old wanted to go. I think her name is Elsa from Frozen. Ah, yes. And then so, of course, you know, uh, you know, got to drop the guy, open up the whole wall. And it's like, wow, the prices, man. I could buy you guys whole outfits. You know, jeans, shirt, the whole bit for that same money. Oh, I know. Yeah. And this is something you're going to wear, you know, once or twice. Maybe yep, if they yep. wear If they wear them at school, maybe, yep. you know, you get a little oh, additional yes. out one day at school or something. But, you know, other than that, it's it's one night. Well, thankfully, my daughter would get some mileage out of hers because she loves the dress up, you know, to dress up oh, like, her, you know, her favorite, her favorite Disney character, which she sings the song all day, every day. <laughs> from the movie, well, you know, she really only knows one verse, and that's "Let it go, let it go, let it go, so, let it yeah. go." So all day, every day, that's all I hear is "Let it go, let it go." And I ask, "What are you letting go?" I don't know. I just like the song. All of it, all <laughs> no, of it, everything. All right, one more, really quick, because I know right. we gotta go. Yeah, so we, we gotta rock. We got, we got. Right, Ash check versus it out. Blair. You cannot get away from this. You must go to the at AM Haunted. Check out a reproduction so cool of a 1929 Halloween catalog that is really cool look at those prices i know man man but we gotta go we gotta play your fox news we come back ash versus the evil dead don't go anywhere be right back right after this News Radio. I'm Kathleen Maloney. Donald Trump on the defensive today after several media reports of women accusing him of unwanted sexual advances. These attacks are orchestrated by the Clintons and their media allies. The only thing Hillary Clinton has going for herself is the press. Without the press, she is absolutely zero. Trump at a rally in Florida. Despite Trump's comment, Hillary apparently has the polls going for her. Fox's Grinnell Scott has the results of the latest Fox News polls. And Kathleen, less than one month before Election Day, Hillary Clinton has an eight-point lead over Donald Trump. Temperament for the presidency is still a key barometer, says Fox News Director of Polling Dana Blanton. Two-thirds, 64%, believe Clinton, yes, she does have the right temperament. It's the opposite for Trump. 63% think he lacks the temperament to serve effectively. Clinton's support is strong among minorities, women, and voters under 30. Trump leads with men, whites, and whites with no college degree. Both are still not likable. But 54% see Clinton as a role model for kids. 77% say Trump is not kathleen thanks grinnell michelle obama says the comments she heard on that vulgar trump video shocked her to the core in this election we have a candidate for president of the united states who over the course of his lifetime in the course of this campaign has said things about women that are so shocking so demeaning that i, I simply will not repeat anything here today. The first lady campaigning for Clinton in New Hampshire. And the stocks lost ground today. The Dow dropping 45 points. S&P slipping 6. NASDAQ down 25. Fox News Radio, fair and balanced. Ahmad Rahimi, accused of bombings in New York and New Jersey, appeared in court today via video from his hospital room. Rahimi pleaded not guilty to six charges, including five attempted murder charges against police officers and unlawful use of a weapon. The state charges stem from a police shootout in Linden, New Jersey, on September 19th, ending in Rahimi's capture. Officer Angel Padilla was in court today. He was wounded during the gunfire. Rahimi is suspected of planting bombs in New Jersey and New York, including a pressure cooker bomb that injured 31 people. He faces nearly a dozen additional federal charges. If convicted of all charges, Rahimi faces a maximum of life in prison. In Elizabeth, New Jersey, Brian Yenis, Fox News. Hurricane Nicole has weakened and moved out to sea after making a direct hit 
on Bermuda. People in the Pacific Northwest are dealing with storms that could topple trees. The winds were initially forecast to get up to 80 miles per hour. The one tonight seems to be, be a little weaker than what was forecasted. I mean, like I said, the jury's still out on the one tomorrow, though. The National Weather Service meteorologist Art Gable in Seattle is predicting the second storm brings gusts up to 60 miles per hour instead of the 100 mile per hour winds initially forecasted. Still, actually a lot of our trees still have their leaves on them and obviously uh, some are with the branches and whatnot so we do expect some power outages. The wind forecast was downgraded in parts of Oregon as well but not for the coast with gusts up to 75 miles per hour predicted. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. Keeping warm could cost you more this winter. The Energy Department says household bills from October through March are likely to be higher for natural gas, electricity, heating oil and propane. Energy prices are expected to go up slightly and forecasters are predicting temperatures to be lower than usual in the Northeast, Midwest, and even the South. I'm Kathleen Maloney, Fox News Radio. Hours AM, everybody, and you know, we had a great first hour, but this time, second hour is dedicated to, yeah, you got it, Ash versus the Evil Dead. Man, oh man, I am telling you what, Eric, I am amped. Who do we got on tonight? Well, first of all, Ash versus the Evil Dead, what a great show now in its second season, and man, you've never seen more blood, comedy, guts, camaraderie. It's got it all. If you're a fan of the original Evil Dead trilogy, and who isn't? This Come is an on. amazing update. I love it, and I love Ash, of course, played by Bruce Campbell. Now in, shall we say, middle age and having to deal with the realities of that, but not willing to give up the ghost. I'll tell you, he is a classic baby boomer, my friends. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. I I love the show. I saw the entire first season, and I was a fan of the movies. I, I grew up in that era. Uh, and I saw them in the theater, and they scared the hell out of me back then. And then now being able to be in my you know 40s, and now seeing that they're able to capture the same magic for the series, because I was skeptical in the beginning. I'm like, I don't know, you know that those movies had a magic about them, right time, time, right place, right actors. But bam, here we are. It's like they never left. They never missed a beat. And yet we have new blood. And among the new blood, tonight we are talking with Pablo Simon Bolivar, a.k.a. real name, Ray Santiago. We're talking with Kelly Maxwell, a.k.a. real name, Dana DiLorenzo. And right now we are speaking with the one and only Chet Kaminsky, a.k.a. Ted Ramey. Welcome to the show, Ted. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. Hey, man. Anytime. Our honor. Definitely our honor. And mad props, man. You're in the original Evil Dead, and we were kind of talking before we came on air how you kind of got into that, but we were told by the radio overlords that we should get this on air, that we should be talking about that. Yes. How did you yes, find radio, your way? The radio guys demanded. I, well, I got, on the, I got on the original Evil Dead because at the time I was uh, 14 and a half or 15 years old. That's all I was. And my father, being a very pragmatic man, wanted me to learn about as many businesses as possible. He thought it was a good idea. And so as my brother had just started in the film business, he said, well, why don't you go down and visit your brother? And, you know, you can see what, you can see what goes on in that business behind the scenes. I did, and partly it was that, and partly it was because he wanted me to make sure that my brother wasn't getting up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with a bunch of his buddies down in Tennessee, you know, basically on investors' dimes. But sure. of course he wasn't. He's an incredibly responsible guy, Sam. But nevertheless, that was, I think, the sort of the um, unspoken desire. And I went down there, and um, they put me to work right away. So that was sort of my first, you know, experience on a large-scale feature film. I was, you know, I started early. I started when I was 14. Most guys have to wait till they're in their 20s, you know. But yeah. I was already, um, you know, lifting grip equipment making, you know, sandwiches for craft service and, uh, you know, learning about lights, 
Magic Hour, all that kind of stuff. So it was a great, great experience. It really gave me a taste for it. And yes, I'm also in it just for a second. But so that was technically my first feature film I ever was in. Now I gotta and say, then, you know, l- later. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go I was ahead. gonna sorry, say sorry, sorry. Be- while I have you on the air, I loved you also in Drag Me to Hell. Oh, thanks. I, I, Thank I, I, you. I like that Thank movie. I thought it really was well done. You did a. I, you've been in so many movies. I mean, it's amazing that this. You know, your your father wanting you to learn every aspect of the business has really blossomed into just an extraordinary career. Yes, I, I oh thank you. As a, for, what a nice thing to say. Thank you so much. I, I uh I'm a lucky guy. Um I you know, it's it, it, I started in this business really not because of what most actors start for, which is they have such a burning desire to mm-hmm. be an actor that no other profession will suit them. Now, I, I do love the business tremendously, all aspects of it, but um, I started off with some really, really crappy jobs in Detroit as a kid. And I was a bus boy. Um, I was a golf caddy. I mean, I had the crappiest of all jobs. <laughs> and I thought, well, man, acting is so much easier than those jobs are. Yeah. So I went into acting just because to to avoid all of that, and I wound up really liking it. But I it wasn't like as a kid I had to do it. It was just something at first I just sort of had an affinity for. And by the time I was seventeen and sixteen, I was doing industrial films uh, all over Detroit for Chrysler, GM, and for those who don't know, industrial films are basically in-house movies that are made for you know, uh, office staff or, or high-end kind of folks inside that are never meant to be seen by the public. Gotcha. I made probably 30 or 40 of those. Wow. Um, and, you know, it was great because I was, there was such a small acting pool in Detroit, as you might imagine, and so much demand for product that I worked about every other weekend in a, a new industrial film. So it was great. And, and I remember one weekend I did a film for uh, GM promoting – their new independence and uh, how these dealerships should be uh, independent. And then in another uh, spot the next week, I did one for the UAW uh, demanding changes from uh, GM and how lousy they were to the dealership. So it was great. I mean, I just worked for everyone. I was just a uh, a media whore, you might say. Well, you know, hey, I know the feeling because we've done that several times ourselves, haven't we, Eric? Man, we whore ourselves. We do. I have uh, voiced... (laughs) I have voiced. Proud of you, boy. <laughs> I have voiced several documentaries that were quite boring. So hey, I'm right there with you. Got to do what pays the bills. But you know, we only have you for about 20 minutes. Wish we had you longer. Maybe one day we'll get you longer. Who knows? But uh, let's talk about Ash versus the Evil Dead. How yeah, excited! How excited! Now, now, did you bring up the idea to stars, or was it the other way around? How did that series come to life? <clears throat> the series. Well, the series came to life because. The executive producers, uh, Rob Tappert, Sam Raimi, and Bruce Campbell, all decided that um, instead of hearing again and again and again and again from fans how much they wanted a movie, mm-hmm. and instead of making that movie, which would have been now you know a big tentpole picture maybe of you know whatever eighty ninety million dollars once, sure they would take that money and make maybe ideally you know like forty or fifty episodes of Ash for his Evil Dead. So now it's a TV show instead of a big feature film mm-hmm. and a one-off, you know, it's a TV series. But the, the advantage to that is that in movies, still, as then as it was today when those first films came out, the rating system is such that you couldn't do what you're doing on television today. It's crazy. You gotcha. know, TV used to be, in those days, much more t- timid than films. And TV, of course, is pushed far ahead and now has no limits in film as far as their ratings and um, family-friendly um, ideals have been left far, far behind. So the things we can do on this show are monumentally gross, wild, crazy, uh, you know, arm-splitting, leg-severing, uh, head-chopping entertainment that we can give the fans I love just that. what they want. And it, it's just the way they want it. Yeah, and we can bring in whoever, whoever we want. I mean, so it's, so it's, it's a wonderful thing. And... Along those lines, you know, horror now, because it's so popular, can bring in young, talented, mm-hmm. attractive talent, which it never used to be able to. Yeah. Like, for, like, Dana, like Dana DiLorenzo on that show. You probably saw her on um, 
the last the last show on Saturday, on Sunday night, and she's she's amazing. But we we couldn't have gotten an actress of that caliber and that much talent and beauty if we had done this um, twenty years ago. You know, when this was, we just had you just take you just get what you get. You know, sure. people don't want to be in horror movies in those days. It was when I started in the business, horror was a lot like doing. Well, it was slightly better than doing porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, or industrial. Oh, well, a friend of mine is uh, Kane Hodder, and he played the original. Or hey, one I know of the Kane. Ri- yeah, yeah, and we were talking about that, about him being in the Friday the Thirteenth movies, and he says, "Yeah, no, it was uh, those early days before horror became vogue. I mean, really in the mainstream, you felt like you were doing darn near X-rated film because everyone kind of looked down on you. Were, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't dare tell your Hollywood friends. That no, you're doing porn no, years, so you wouldn't dare like." When I started doing, you know, Wes Craven films and Toby Hooper, Hooper films and stuff, um, I mean, it wasn't, I was glad for the work, and I loved the genre myself. I always had an affinity for it. But as far as the Hollywood community was concerned in those days, man, you were sort of ostracized. Now, sure. now you're welcome in. Now yeah. you're totally welcome in, you know. Yeah. And now, obviously, you know, these talented young actors can, you know, do it, and, and it's good for their careers. It's not detrimental. Well, tell me what it's like, Ted, to play Chet Kaminsky. What's that like? What is, is oh. I mean, that is a funny role. I mean, you really knocked that one out of the park. Oh, I thank you so much. It's uh, it, it's a blast to play Chet. Chet is um, a part that, you know, a, a part I play about half the time, which is a well-meaning imbecile. He really is. I mean, he's just a moron. But um, Chet grew up in this small town of um, Elk Grove, which we've now seen in the first two episodes. And... Chet is Ash Williams' best childhood buddy and yep. the only one who believes that Ash is not a monster and, and, and while he may or may not have chopped up his friends, Chet believes that Ash only has good intentions. So Ash stuck with him and he's stuck with Ash. Uh, meantime, though, Chet doesn't have much motivation. Ash doesn't have much, but Chet even has <laughs> less motivation. So Chet hangs around this little dumpy town, bartends, and on the side makes ketamine drinks for his buddy. <laughs> That's really what he likes to do. Seriously, he makes special K drinks. So um, he's that kind of a guy. Okay. But, how- he, but he sticks with Ash, and that's the main thing. Ted, I got to ask you. How and do it's you- a blast to play him, and it's a blast to play him because I've known Bruce, you know, since I was 15 sure. years old. And uh, I, I remember, sorry, younger, actually. I was probably like 11. I remember him when he was 18. And so we have become pals over you know 30 some odd years and now here we are playing buddy so it's a it's an easy transition and a really welcome one and it's great too to be back in this show after so long you know it's like a weird high school reunion but now with like some new high school students came back too so it's kind of awesome that is cool and and of course uh, i've interviewed uh, uh bruce campbell a few times in radio and and he's as cool and nice in person as anyone i mean just a down-to-earth guy you know when you talk to him yeah. right? i mean just just no you know, no, I, he he kind of said this way. I, I'm not really Hollywood. For a long time, it's like he said, I wasn't really considered Hollywood. I did a lot of character roles, this, that, and other thing. But that's what's kind of kept me grounded is what he was telling me. And, you know, he's just, in his heart, just a normal guy. Yeah, I think he is. And, um, yes, he's, you know, Bruce Bruce, Bruce can straddle that, that well, by straddling this, this zone between a character actor and a leading man, which he does, he does a he has great done something job. that very few actors have done. He's created his own persona. Yes, he he's has. He's neither or, you know. He's really neither or. He's he's neither a traditional leading man nor a traditional character actor. And because of that, um, he's created something incredibly unique. So people can say now, as very few actors are able to, they may want a Bruce Campbell type, quote unquote, in their movie. <laughs> exactly. And it's an incredible thing, you know. Um, um, and it's so I'm I'm so happy for him. I really am. It's, it's just amazing. And he really shows his stuff in this show. You know, this this Ash vs Evil Dead series is perfect for Bruce. Mm-hmm. It 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 plays to all of his strengths. And um, and he has very few weaknesses to tell you the truth. But if he did, this this show uh, doesn't seem to show any of them. So I think it's just great. It, it is great. It circles around for him, and and like you were saying, he straddles the line. So he's almost a self parody. But not quite. So that that inner self does come through, and it's also hard to distinguish. It really does. What is him, the person, versus him, this character that he has played on and off for thirty plus years? And I think he gets to explore that. And and 
by by recombining with you from the from the old days and then with these new younger characters and, and Lucy of course uh you know he gets to play all these different sides of this mm-hmm. character who is again he's almost an action hero he's almost a leading man and he's but he's also never afraid to make fun of himself and he realizes that at times he appears really ridiculous and that's probably his most endearing quality it is and 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 uh, like all great comedians and and serious actors doing that is uh well it seems easy yeah and and rather um easy breezy you know on camera it takes years to really hone that and be great at it sure and um bruce has done that so it's like watching a great musician it looks easy to do but uh, once you you know pick up a guitar you're like holy crap this is really really hard you realize you have years of work ahead of you, but Bruce has already done all that work, so so it's great to work with him, you know. And and um, but that's not to say he's doesn't bust his ass on set more than anybody yep, he does. Yep, exactly. Um, and so do is, you, my he's friend. He's the oldest one in the cast, but he works um, pretty much harder than anybody. I, I've never seen anyone just just knock themselves out so hard for any part, you know, like uh, like Bruce does. So it's, so it's great, you know. And he's a great figurehead. Look, I. Being that, look, I've, I've done almost 100 movies in my life, and I can tell you that any star of a movie or mm-hmm. television show that you do, all those actors and crew are looking to the star to determine their behavior. He's almost like the quarterback and of the team, the if, captain, the captain of the team. That's right. So if the star is, say, for example, uh, loudmouth or something and he's lazy, well, then the crew's going to be much the same way. Mm-hmm. And But Bruce, on the other hand, is... Incredibly hardworking, very funny, and um, um, very specific in all all the things he does, including uh, how he wants you know the scene to go and um, all the small details. And, and all of us uh, follow that rule. And because of that, I think the show really, really benefits. We're all very inspired by him uh, on set every day. You know, he's a yeah. he's a great he's a great captain to follow. Well, one quick side note: I was really happy to see Lee Majors joining the the crew. Um, that was wonderful to oh, see Lee yeah. back on film. Um, what an actor! What an asset to have. It, he is an asset, and um, uh, it's so funny that you know when I, we were at Comic Con a few days ago, and we played to a, cr- a crowd of several thousand uh, to show them Episode Two, and they were just young kids there. Some of them, you know, they were maybe fifteen, eighteen, and I thought, well. I guess they may may know who I am, you know, if they go back a little while, if they, if they watch old stuff, or some of my newer stuff I knew they knew me before, but my older stuff I didn't think. But, man, I thought Lee would have a problem. I thought, they were, I thought we would get a bunch of blank faces when sure. we introduced him. But, they, but that didn't happen. He's such an icon, yeah. and those fans were so crazy that they went absolutely bananas when they saw him. And it was so gratifying to see, you know, especially in this business where, you know, actors, as they get older, they just tend to really vanish into the sunset quickly, you know, and are forgotten. But, but Lee Majors, no. And he is as warm and generous on set as he is off set. So that was one of the nice things to know, you know. It yeah. isn't true with all actors, but it, it really is true with him. Yeah, I've heard that several times from other actors that Lee Majors, man, he is just the warmest fellow you're ever going to meet and really dedicated to his craft and also dedicated to making those around him better. He is. He is. He loves. You know. Look. He, he's. He's just an actor. He's an actor's actor. He's not. A, he's not just an icon. You know. There are some people out there. Uh, you know, I don't want to name names that are sure. um, around his age who are just. They're just iconic, but they're sure. not really actors. They're more yeah. like a. I don't know. Say if Kim Kardashian got really old, yeah. you go. Well, she's not really much now, but she wasn't much then. But Lee <laughs> is an actor first and foremost, and that really pushes him forward. Yeah. Yeah, you know, oh, that definitely. Really, I think that really sets the tone. And, man, when he starts to work, you can see this is a man who has had a few cameras and dollies pushed into his face, and he is comfortable, you know, yep. like putting on an old glove. You know, he's yep. just great at it. Yeah, he's comfortable in his own acting skin, and that's that's hard to come by. It's kind of yeah. like radio. I mean, you know, some people, we've had people on the air, they're wonderful off air. We get them from a million people, and they clam up. Come on, we're on radio. You need to t- yeah. say something, and so you can definitely tell the veterans, right. you know, from the newer, you know, new actors and actresses, the veterans, man, they could click it on just like that. You know, what I mean, just snap the fingers. Here I am, and that's a mark of a true professional. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. So it was great to work with Lee, and uh, he's a, he really is a tremendous guy. All, all, the whole cast is 
is tremendous. And I felt very lucky to be coming back after 30 years um, to this after all the things I've done. You know, I've covered most genres now in my life a few times. Um, the only ones I'm missing are that I'm dying to do is a war picture. But beyond mm -hmm. that, I've done just about everything else. And, man, this is like, you know, coming back home. So it's just great. And now it, this is the sixth character I've played mm -hmm. in this uh, – in this wow. series of films and now television show, this is character number six. So, yeah, as a character actor, it's great. I played the first character in Evil Dead Two, um, another four mm -hmm. characters. Sorry, yeah, another four characters, and now uh, Chet Kaminsky's six. So it's it's crazy. Well, I, well, you know what? You have a wonderful body of work. I, I mean, you know, when I when I learned we're gonna be talking to you, I, I got a little giddy because I, I actually own quite a few <laughs> films that you're in, and and quite oh, honestly, oh it's an well, honor, you. honor, thank privilege you. to talk to you, Ted. It really is. About Ted, his, real quick, let oh, me thank you. let me drop it in here. What what are real quick some of the pluses and minuses of being a member of the famous movie making Raimi clan? Pluses and minuses. Well, um, I you know I I don't think well on the plus side it's it's nice to be in a in a group. They they call us me Bruce my brother Sam uh, Rob Tappert. They call us the the Detroit Mafia. Um, I don't know why, but this, that's our moniker, which is I find very strange. So I guess that's a good and bad thing, just on the, on the plus side. Um, it's cool to have a name like that. On the bad side, it sounds like all we do is break legs in Hollywood, um, which is not great. <laughs> but, um, so fear. Uh, <laughs> Go forth and so fear. Yes, yeah, fear, fear is, uh, yeah, you know, I guess, I guess it's not a bad thing in this town. It's good to be feared a little bit. That's so right. I'd rather be feared than loved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, who said that? Um, I can't remember what that was. Well, that was, uh, that was I, I think that's the Emperor Caligula. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think he said, um, after uh, one of the senators said, uh, but Emperor, uh, they all hate you. He said, uh, let them hate me as long as they fear me. So I suppose, that, I suppose that's <laughs> one way of uh, approaching this business, not the way I like to approach sure, it. Sure, ex uh, exactly. exactly. I think that you, uh, you've earned respect through hard work and dedication, Ted. I mean, you know, absolutely. You are. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, you know, very much. It's very kind of you guys. Thank you so much. I, uh, it's look. I feel very lucky to be around. Um, you know, I've been, been doing it so many years, and uh, usually actors uh, fade away pretty quick, and I'm uh, one of the lucky ones. So here well, I am today doing this awesome show uh, on Stars Network, no less. You know, and I just couldn't believe it. They've got Stars is amazing. They have these shows like Power, you know, and that are just these intense dramas. Uh, um, and um, here we are, another intense drama, but really different. You know? It is a lot of fun. Um, really, really different. So, that show you. is a lot yeah, of fun. I mean, they it's... talk about buckets of blood. This is pools full of blood. It is. You can you can literally drown in all of the blood uh, that's on the show. Plus, um, there is no show uh, on television uh, where the lead actor was attacked by a colon. No, <laughs> it is the first. I think it is. I don't think, it, and I don't think there was ever a show on TV where a lead actor was sucked up the anus of a dead body. I don't think that ever happened. No, I either. think that might be a first um, as well. You don't see that? I don't, yeah, CSI. I don't think so. And now I'm not sure. I'm not sure, and I, and I think it's a game changer because now, if you're, I think this may become an onset example. Or a threat that directors now may give their actors. They'll say, <laughs> well, sure, you stepped in mud and you got mud splashed all over your face and you don't look pretty anymore. You don't look handsome at the moment, but at least you didn't get sucked up the That's anus right. The Call and me when I that happens. This is, so I think actors would be like, well, I guess you better have a little mud or blood, you know, or, or grease or oil on my face because uh, that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. You better thank, thank your lucky stars you're not in the anus right now. You bet. No, that's that's, right. uh, that's the audition. <laughs> that's, that's right. Audition. So, what's your special skills? Eh, I don't mind going to an anus once in a while. I mean, come on. I mean, as long right. as the cameras are <laughs> exactly. Who sees that coming? You know, that's in a, you can, in that's a show. Right. It's, um, it's just beneath the singing, dancing, and uh, polo playing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I know Ted. You got to run. I, under, I you know, I, I know we only had you for twenty minutes. You gave us twenty three minutes of your time. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It has been an honor oh, and thank a you for privilege. What a pleasure! Thanks, you guys. It was it was a blast, and um, and uh, thanks show. for having me. I'm a fan of yours, and um, I'm uh, can't wait till uh, 
season, uh, episode three. They don't, I haven't seen them yet, incidentally. I have not seen uh, any of the episodes, so uh, they'll be new to me, too. You, you, you think we, act, we actors uh, get some special uh, privilege to see them early. We don't, so we get to see them when everybody does. So I'm looking forward to the rest, too. Oh, you're going to love it. You're, you're going to love it. What a ride. And you guys really, the whole cast knocks it out of the park. They really do. I, oh, thank you so much, and uh, and um, um, it was great to be on your show, you guys. And um, please have me on again. It was oh, absolutely! Really I'd love to have you on for a full interview, just to just to thank talk you. to you about whatever everything that you've done. So again, oh, everybody. Ab- oh, thank you. You better believe it. Ted Raimi, guys, don't want to miss him. Evil Dead, Ash versus the Evil Dead, only on Stars. Don't Thanks miss so him. Much, Ted. What a blast. Thank you, guys. Have a good one, Ted. Thank you so much. ideas, work, and creativity that make it your yard. At Ace, we're here to help with hoses and sprinklers to nurture growth, gardening tools for the shape of good things to come, even the right fertilizer and bug killers to make the grass a little greener. You'll find it all now at Ace, your place with everything you need for your yard, plus helpful advice, almost like we're right there. Ace, the helpful place. Anavar Media LCC is a dedicated team of professionals committed to helping business development scale and protect their websites, mobile applications, enterprise software solutions in the Northeast Ohio area. Locally owned since 2012, our client-centered value has truly sets Anavar apart. Contact us today to learn how you can get 25% off your first project. Call them at 234-380-4852. Again, that's 234-380-4852. Or visit them at www.anavar.com. Again, that's www.anavar.com. Welcome back to After Hours AM, everybody, and we have guest number two, Mr. Eric, who is our guest number two? Well, he is known as Pablo Simon Bolivar. What a name. What a triple threat name, my friends. And he is played by the hilarious and yet touching Ray Santiago. Ray has recurred on (laughs) hit television shows, Bad Judge, Touch, Raising Hope, Dexter, Oh, my goodness. Movies, Suburban Gothic with Kat Dennings, Sex Ed, In Time, Holy Cats, American Son, Meet the Fockers, Girl Fight, and the upcoming indie feature, Dynamite. The New Yorican Santiago currently resides in Los Angeles, but originally hails from the Bronx in New York. He also attended the Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and the Performing Arts, which is the Fame School. Welcome to the program, Ray Santiago. We are delighted to have you. Hey, man. hey, hey Ray. Here. What's up, man? Good, not much. Hey, um, other than talking to you, I got to tell you right away, I love you in the Evil Dead, Ash vs. Evil Dead. I was a big fan of the original movies. And boy, do you just, you know, you guys br- just bring that same vibe Right along with you to the TV series, and that is a hard thing to do. Go from film, you know, the I- iconic Evil Dead films, which everybody was thinking, well, how do you pull this off? Because it was such a such a rabid fan base, and then to bring it to stars and not even skip a beat and have that same feel, that same elements. My lord, man, great job, great, great job. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate it. That was quite the intro, I must say. Hey, and the other thing I'm going to add is it's a darn good thing that you and Dana do fit in so well, or the show would be nothing but old farts. <laughs> what? Jeez. You can't Watch call it. Lee Those Majors. Are called classic comedic horror old farts to you. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> right. My coworkers, old farts. Those are cold. 
those are old, old farts are icons, and I, I am they so are. lucky to be working with them. Um, no, I know you say it in jest. Well but, put. Uh, we, well uh, put, young man. <laughs> and it's your um, turn to buy the drinks. You know, for sure, for sure. You know, what's awesome is that, you know, um, stars and the people behind the franchise, what they've done is they've diversified the cast. They've uh, introduced it to a whole new generation. And so now all the babies uh, and, and crazies of tomorrow will get their horror and comedy fix um, with this show. It is an honor to be part of the uh, future of the franchise. And, you know, I hope that, um, you know, it lasts 30 more years and that I get to wheel out Bruce Campbell in a wheelchair, sure. and crank up the <laughs> chainsaw and help him uh, save the world from deadites and the evil force. Um, we are so excited uh, that, that the fans have embraced Dana and I and the new characters uh, on, on the new, uh, you know, installment of the franchise. And we're super excited for people to um, to catch season two. We just got renewed for season three last Love week. It. And uh, and season two is on the air right now. You can uh, catch it on, on Stars, which is what, you know, it airs our show. Stars, Sunday night at 8. I watched it with my family and my 11-year-old niece and my 3-year-old uh, cousin. Yes, I said 3-year-old cousin. We cover his <laughs> eyes. Well, you know, a lot of that's right. Swearing and whatnot. That's right. I mean, come on. You're never yeah, too young. Yeah, you know, we might have had to cover his eyes when that, you know, Prince Albert, uh, <laughs> you know, colon fight scene happened <laughs> in episode 2 for... Spoiler alert, sorry, but um, but yeah, I watched with my family. I'm in New York right now, sort of finishing up the press tour for Comic-Con and sure. everything that happened this past weekend, and I got to watch with my family, and uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, you can catch it on Stars, and there's a Stars app available right now where you can go and download it, and uh, the Stars app is free, it's less than 10 bucks a month, you get to watch our show and the incredible catalog that Stars has created for us, so it's a pretty it's a pretty exciting time for uh, for fans. I mean, season two has uh, sort of started, and Halloween's right around the corner, and there will be uh, lots of blood and gore and viscera that the uh, fans can expect. Ooh, well, viscera, I yeah, love that I, word. Nothing wrong with viscera. That's that's a great word. But Ray, what was your you know you're you're 32 years old now? You 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 weren't. I want to say you probably didn't go see the original Evil Dead. I'm going to go on a limb when it was out in theaters back in the mid '80s. He wasn't born because you weren't born yet. What What was your exposure before you ever got into this to the Evil Dead? Was it on the VHS like we all had to do it, or 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 did you ever watch any of the films? I watched Evil Dead. Uh, I think I watched it on a DVD with friends. Uh, in LA, actually, um, it was it was sort of a movie night with friends, and we watched all of them. And uh, I'd always been a fan of horror films as a kid. You know, as a kid, I, I wanted to be a, a sort of superhero uh, and save the world from evil, and I wanted to be chased by monsters. And on Ash, I had the opportunity to be the first Latino psychic to a horror genre comedic uh, television show. And, uh, <laughs> That's right. It brought me one step closer to being the superhero I wanted to be as a kid. Well, I, I think you're there, I man. You're there, too. I do. You're already a superhero. You are tough and ballsy and resilient, and yet you're also touching, and of course you kind of a little bit have the hots for Dana's character. Well, who wouldn't? It's a very complete role. I think it's fantastic. I, I Yeah, yeah, it really is. You know, it's a... Uh, it's it's all encompassing for me, and it's an opportunity for me as an actor to sure. to tell the story of a you know positive portrayal of a Latino, which we don't always get to see on on, mm -hmm. on television. And you know, Pablo has a really big heart. He's the heart of the um, trio. Dana is the brains, and Ash is the muscle behind the uh, behind the trio. And and together, these uh, three dysfunctional human beings come together to become the ultimate monster fighting squad. And this season, we have Lucy Lawless joining uh, uh, our side for for quite some wow. time. Wow! We'll have to see if. Uh, she proves to be who she says she Zena. is. Um, you can never really trust anyone in the Evil Dead. You can no. never trust them if they're going to live, die, be good, bad. Um, and that's that's kind of the beauty of our show. Anything can happen. I mean, hard um, environment to make friends you know, in. <laughs> what you say? Hard environment to really make truly truly good friends, and you just don't know when they're going to die next. 
Yeah, I'll hang yeah, out with you until yeah. you know. We'll see what happens. We'll, well see. that was a really telling, important point toward the end of of the first season. Ash really had to decide. Mm-hmm. Of course, he you know he already liked you guys so much, and he felt a certain sense of responsibility. But would he commit to the, that relationship? Would he embrace you guys, or would he push you away because he cared about you? And that was a real twenty a turning point when he said, "Okay, we're a team now. We're a trio. I care about you. You're my family." I mean, what's cool is that, you know, we get to see Ash in a different light. Sure. You know, he's been on this journey for so long alone, and I think that the show has introduced, you know, characters that he can care about. And uh, particularly in season two, we get to see him be a bit more paternal and, you know, invested in the in the family that he's created with these sidekicks. And mm-hmm. he sort of realizes that he needs them as much as they need him. And that without, without uh, the trio, he's sort of just a... Uh, you know, lonely Lothario idiot who just gets drunk. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 a very, <laughs> it's a very touching Hallmark. Yeah, really. Go ahead. I said it's a very touching, almost Hallmark moment. Yeah. Where he realizes, you know, lonely I can't... Lonely Lothario idiot. Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, it is. It is. And, and you know, and I think that that's why uh, it sort of has been working, because it's like, well, what's the evolution of Ash? And uh, it's limited. It's limited in where we find him, but then when we find him, it begins to grow. And I think that mm-hmm. the characters that we've introduced have made an excellent addition to the franchise, and the f- fans have really embraced us, and um, they are going to see so many great things happen this season. You know, I can speak to Pablo's journey. You know, he is completely traumatized from what happened to him in the cabin last season. You know, birthing demons out of your mouth is not something... No, that that's not exactly a good through. time. No, no. I saw that you know, scene, and I, it made me cringe. I, I, I gotta say, some of the stuff in there, even for this hardcore horror guy, was like, I can't be- believe that they just showed that. Oh my God! Yeah, well, the gore. I'm happy that they chose for the demons to come out of my mouth and not the other. <laughs> well, that, that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, but but you know, um, Pablo, like I said, he's been going through that dark time. Now he's being haunted by the visions, and there's there's uh, no denying he has a connection to the Necronomicon, and mm-hmm. uh, basically. It is going to be a very tortured journey for him this season. The evil force on the Necronomicon have not, uh, you know, they haven't finished with Pablo, and he is going to go down this journey where he's going to try and be the best sidekick that he can be and be a stronger sidekick, and ultimately he may become the hero that he never thought he could be. We just we just never know if he will survive. We, we don't know on this kind of show. So sure. um, no one is uh, guaranteed a, a spot on, on next week's episode. So just, uh, you know, you just have to keep your fingers crossed well, and, uh, you know, hashtag mercy for, for Pablo. Ex- uh, yes, ma- mercy for Pablo. I, I, I don't know what I'd do if there was no Pablo. I, I mean, I might just throw my remote out the window. I might scream to the wow. heavens. What the hell? Why? No, but uh, on a serious note, Ray, uh, when you did you audition for this role or did they approach you? I um, I did. I did audition for this role. Uh, it, it came to me a, a couple pilot seasons ago. I was really excited about it. Um, they kept telling me this is the job to get, and I said, "Well, don't don't worry, I got it, and uh, I'll make it work." And I went in there with you know a lot of confidence, and met Sam Rainey, and he said, "You know, uh, you know, do you think that if we if we went with you, that you'd be able to hang and deal with what what we're throwing at you?" And I said, "I want to be completely covered in blood, and I want to run through the wilderness of New Zealand naked. <laughs> you know, I want to be chased by deadites. I'll do whatever you want." And I like peanut butter. And, um, and I want them I erupting out of my <laughs> orifice. <laughs> Mm, maybe not. Well, well uh, no, that would but, not be good. No. But I can tease that some of that actually starts to happen. You know, so you have to be careful what you put out into the world because it will happen. Uh, Pablo is definitely shirts coming off, and he's running from dead ice in the wilderness, kind of naked, uh, covered in stuff. And uh, I think the fans are going to be really excited with uh, what happens. Uh, I, and Pablo sort of goes. Go ahead. I was going to say I I totally agree with you. I I and that. Talking about getting the role, dude, it's like a glove, man. You fit the role perfect. The role fits you. I couldn't imagine anybody else playing that role. 
I really appreciate that. That means a lot. Um, you know, there, there is a sensibility that Pablo has, vulnerability, this heart. Uh, as I said before, him being the heart of, of, of the trio and the eyes of the audience. Uh, you just sort of root for him, and I think it comes from 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 my eyes. Uh, you know, Pablo just really you know wants three things in this evil dead world, and that is to stay alive, get the girl, and be a hero. And uh, you know, I think that's. So um, Kind of my motto. Kind of sure. My motto in life sure. as well, you know. And what a coincidence um, that the Necronomicon happened to fit your face. <laughs> I mean, listen, I think that if the mask fits, wear it. Right? That's right. So what an interesting way to be intertwined into the franchise. It's like I am forever now connected to the franchise through the Book of the Dead, which is the key component of why this whole uh mess is happening and I, I i can tease that you know this season pablo's journey leads him down a path that will forever change him in a way very similar to uh the way that ash was changed uh mm-hmm. after the first two films and you know after losing his hand so you know no one is going to hmm. um, interesting you know, no interesting. one will be untouched people people are going to things are going to happen and uh we're just going to have to keep our fingers crossed exactly that, uh, Pablo has what it takes to make it through. Exactly. You know, we should mention about Pablo, uh, which I don't think we have yet, that he was in training so that he has some sort of internal ability to be a brujo. I mean, you were on your way. So there's something going on inside there besides just the regular old human stuff. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, this season and moving forward we are definitely intertwining uh the seed that was planted with the brujo and making sense sure. of it all for you guys so that uh it's not just this uh sort of evil force that's lurking in the world but perhaps you know pablo's biggest weapon lies within himself you know last wow. season he struggled to find his his weapon of choice and you know this season i don't need my rusty chain because i got my guns i've been working on my arms and stuff and and perhaps you know my, my biggest weapon lies within me and the audience will have to stay tuned to see if uh if uh there's a brujo in training that can perhaps assist ash in this uh journey to take uh, uh uh you know the world from save the world from evil Exactly. Ash needs an equal power with him. He needs his Pablo. And that would be heroic. <laughs> that, that's right. To be like his Luke, Luke Skywalker to the Obi-Wan Kenobi. Exactly. Yep, I see it. Now, Ray, you know, we are at the Halloween season, and, and i got to ask you, this is primarily a paranormal show. We covered a lot. Have you ever had a paranormal experience? Um, uh, we had a paranormal experience on set. We shot in this haunted asylum, so they say allegedly it's haunted, and uh, we had a couple funky things happen on set, uh, random sort of lights flashing uh, while shooting a scene. Uh, uh, there was a, a, a picture frame that had broken, um, just funky things, but... um. No, nah, not really. I mean, I do believe in paranormal activity, and I do believe that things out there can can do, that there is a uh, there's a there's another force out there sure. that lies that's lurking in the world, you know. Um, but uh, I haven't come into contact with it yet, so I'm good. <laughs> but um, you know, Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. That's kind of like what it's like working on our show. It's like Halloween every day. I love to dress up for Halloween. I've, I've dressed up as uh, uh, many, um, many different iconic uh, costumes. I was, uh, let's see, I was uh, Obama when I had a buzz cut, and I won lots of money in a Halloween contest. Dressed up as Mighty Mouse. I dressed up as Prince. I dressed <laughs> wow. up as Rita Kahlo. Uh, and this year, <laughs> Rita I'm, trying to, Dana to, I'm try, trying to get Dana to be my Morticia so I can be Gomez. See, oh, that would be perfect. That would be perfect right there. You know. For sure. You know, I, I think you guys should do it. Absolutely. Convince her. We'll talk to her on your behalf when we talk to her today. And we'll say, you know. We'll plant the seed. You know, Ray would really like to. Did you? Are you talking to her today or you already did? We will be talking to her today. Later on. A little bit later on in the show here. You should say you should dress up 
as Morticia and, <laughs> and, and, and Gomez. I think that's the best costume for you guys. And then see if she says, if you Gold. put you up to it or if she just believes in you guys. Well, uh, we're uh, having her on next artist. segment. But we're having her on next segment. So we make sure she's from Ohio. This. So that's I, right. she'll do everything I tell her. Everything. Yeah. You'll be like, hey, we're, we're both from Ohio. Come on. Throw me a bone. I tell here. you to do. Be Morticia. <laughs> <laughs> uh sweet you guys have any more questions <laughs> no i mean you know we just uh definitely enjoy talking with you you guys have done a great job uh on the show and ash versus the evil dead is just absolutely a phenomenal show anyone that hasn't seen it yet anyone that's living under that rock should go ahead check it's it missing out something they're oh, missing yes. something and they need to they yes need to tune in i mean it's been around for 30 something years and now it's back and there's a reason how great it must feel to be Sam Raimi and know that something you started and created with your homies that you wanted to make uh, a film with would live forever I'll never forget the moment at my first New York Comic Con when we premiered the first episode of the first season and I turned to Sam right before we went out to do the panel I saw the tears coming down his eyes and I knew wow he is proud of this and this is going to live on for much longer than he ever anticipated and to be a part of it is an honor and i'm just so happy to have found a home on ash versus evil dead i've been looking for a tv home for a while and my tv family is super dope we take care of each other we look after each other and uh and we work really hard you know we don't take any of it for granted we know what the fans want and and we want to make sure that we get it to them and uh listen i'm strung up and you know, all sorts of positions this season. And I tell them, this is nothing. Like, you can keep torturing me. I'm ready. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. I'll say uncle. Don't this worry. nothing. Give me more. Yeah. Make it work. Come on. Come on. Exactly. Those demons exactly. do not have to come out my mouth. <laughs> oh, come on now. Let, let, do not put words into his mouth there, Eric. Come on. What I want to say is congratulations, Ray, because it is a great role, and you are absolutely perfect in it. Thank you so much, guys. Ray Santiago, everybody. Check him out on Ash vs. the Evil Dead, only on Stars. You're not going to want to miss it. Again, Ray, thank you for so much for coming on the show. Oh, uh, for sure. Please follow us at uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Real Ray Santiago on Twitter and Instagram and all socials. So please reach out, ask questions, give us your comments, and we will do our best to keep you fans very happy. All right, man. Perfect, perfect. We come back. We're having Kelly Maxwell on next, and you're going to want to hear what she has to say because, man, oh, man, that's another up-and-coming star in the Ash vs. Evil Dead universe. That's next. Don't miss that. Anavar Media LCC is a dedicated team of professionals committed to helping business development scale and protect their websites, mobile applications, enterprise software solutions in the Northeast Ohio area. Locally owned since 2012, our client-centered values truly sets Anavar apart. Contact us today to learn how you can get 25% off your first project. Call them at 234-380-4852. Again, that's 234-380-4852. Or visit them at www.anavar.com. Again, that's www.anavar.com. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope. It's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico. <laughs> Right along with me, Eric Olson. Hey, Eric, man. This is the third segment of the show. I'm really, really excited because guess who we got on tonight? We have Dana DiLorenzo. That's right. A.K.A. Kelly Maxwell on Ash vs. Evil Dead. And I confess, 
I have a mid-level crush on her. A mid-level? That was massive. Last time I talked to you, you were like, yeah, that Dina, let me tell you. And I'm like, cool your jets, man. Cool your that jets. That doesn't mean there's no room for it to grow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Dana. Dana DiLorenzo, an Ohio native, we're going to talk about that, has had roles in films such as A Very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas and a leading role in The Mad Ones. DiLorenzo's television credits include Barely Famous, Sullivan and Son, Workaholics, Two Broke Girls, Californication, Growing Up Fisher, Eagle Heart, and Impress Me among many, many others. She also appeared regularly on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. DiLorenzo is a graduate of DePaul University in Chicago, and she currently resides in Los Angeles. Welcome to the program, Dana DiLorenzo. Hi, guys. What up, what up? Hey, By just... the way, can I just say that was, can I give you an award right now, an award I've never given in my life? Sure. Please. That was the best backhanded compliment I've ever gotten in my life. A <laughs> mid-level crush. A mid-level crush. That I know. Just needs this room to what? grow. Well, you know, if you met his wife, you would be like, "Yeah, you definitely want to keep it mid-level because you know his his wife will, will you know cut a few parts off of this dude." So I'm just saying, it's better. It's okay. Like, no, well, she sounds like my kind of chick. <laughs> but you know, for future reference, for your next crush. You could just say crush. Yes. You don't have to crush. No, no, you, you don't. Know, you don't have to categorize. I have, I have a crush on her only, only three days of the week, and yes. only when she doesn't look like she just rolled out of bed and hit herself with a frying pan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just crawled out of a. But it's okay. I'll take it. But you know yeah. what? I will take it. Well, I will you know, take it. I, you know, I will honestly thank you. Usually, it's only. The lovely homeless men that hit on me. So, thank you. That is a nice comment. Well, those are some I lucky take homeless men. Crush in I just song. want to leave it room to grow and expand. That's all. That wow, listen adjustment. to him. You know, you sure keep saying expand a lot, Eric. You're starting to creep me out a little bit. I know. Bit. I, I mean, it sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> it does. Are we in a Viagra commercial or are we on a radio interview? Right. Have you noticed on the Viagra commercials, they never show the guy? It's always the woman. Because going, isn't that who they want to make happy anyway? But, but, Come but, but, on. You see the back of the guy's head or he's wandering off on a, in a towel or something. And, and why is that? What is the marketing well, reason for because, that? Explain dude, that to me. dude, for real, here's the real deal. And I know Dana will agree with me. That pill wasn't really designed for the guy. It was, in essence, designed to make the woman happy. I mean, no, baby, that's why chocolate and pizza was invented. But I'm impressed <laughs> with your extensive research that you've done on the Viagra commercial. Yeah, yeah. I, I, All right, Dana. I, I really am. We have to say now, all right, back to the show. You are so great in it, and you've grown in the role. That is not a euphemism for expand, by the way. <laughs> you have grown in the role, and you're a badass, but you're also very sweet and very cute and man you can handle it all and you guys the three of you the trio the family the new family unit there that is so adorable and touching that's what my wife goes oh they're it's adorable just, just, just so happy together I, she goes they're adorable <laughs> <laughs> now nah, the show is i need to like hang out with your wife i think that's what we've discovered at this point the, yeah um, thank you that those are all very those are all very a uh, high level compliment Thank you very much. We've moved on from the mid-level. That's very good. Sure, very, sure. Very we, we moved up now. Um, and, uh, you know, i got to say, though, the show, <laughs> is, the, the, the show is great. The show is awesome. It's taken the – I've always been a fan of the Evil Dead from, you know, the original films, the whole thing. Uh, it's actually taken it to the next level, and it's expanded the Evil Dead universe. And it really made me happy as one of those rabid fans out there, so to speak – that you guys were able to take the essence and all the thrill and the fun from the movies and bring it right to stars. And that's not an easy feat to oh. do at all. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear um, when it's rabid fans like you um, who are happy with, with how it is, uh, this latest installment has turned out. Um, and, and thank you for, for being a lifelong fan because it's because of fans like you that I uh, have a job. Well, heck yeah. We want to, you know. Um, but I do think it's a testament, you know, the reason it works, um, it, it's pretty obvious when you have the original creators, um, maintaining the same vision, um, with the, the showrunner, Craig DiGregorio carrying on the torch and you have the same star, 
of yep. the incredible Bruce Campbell. I think what because those main ingredients are there, that's why you can throw in a Pablo, you can throw in a Kelly and a Ruby and a Chet played by sure. Ted Ramey, and sure. you know Lee Majors playing Ash's dad. I, I think you can add all those ingredients, and it works because the foundation's there. Yeah. Um, and they, and especially, I, I don't know if you're caught up to what is um, aired. Um, but I mean, especially that, that spoiler alert, Coleman fight. I mean, that is evil dead at its best. <laughs> that it is, that best. is. You know what I mean? When I saw a Colin fight happening, I'm like, no way. Shut the front door. They just showed that on oh, stars. I mean, you know, this is why stars is like the best network ever. I cannot talk enough about them. No one can, because they are so good at being like, you got, you know, go, go do it. Like they don't give. Any notes, like how, you know, there's like that Twitter account of, yep. you know, network notes, and they're always ridiculous. Like, oh, her hair needs to be slightly lighter, you know, sure. or it's like, oh, no, we have to, we have to make sure that, that this scene is funny, even though it's a dramatic scene where someone loses their head, we have to make it funny, but funny about a totally different character. Like, what do you even think? Yeah. This is so amazing because they give us free reign to do whatever creative, uh, crazy fight, such as a fight with a colon, which is, head promptly inside of a cadaver. Um, they're like, yes, we love it. Go for it. Yeah. So um, Stars is incredible that way. And that's another reason why this show works. Because if we had, if Evil Dead had limitations, it would, nev- it would never work. It no. would not be Evil Dead. No, you know that, what I mean? that was always part of the charm of the Evil Dead, is you just never knew what was going to happen next. I mean, you know, even the films, it was... When you thought you hit that, you know, that plateau of, okay, what can they do next? And they hit you with something new... The show takes it even further, like with the colon fight. You just, there, there's oh, no yeah. way I saw that coming. I don't think anyone did, and I don't think you will ever be able to unsee that as long as you like. No, it's, an, it's, an, it's burned in my memory banks. <laughs> well, what's so <laughs> great about way. it? What's so great about it is it literally is a hybrid of the best of film. So the relatively untethered, uncensored aspects Mm -hmm. and production values. Then with the serial aspect and the ability to stretch out over time and tell a much longer and more complete and more detailed story over time that you get from television. So you get this amazing hybrid. Plus, I think Bruce is the best he's ever been at this point. Oh, I agree. You know what? I could not agree with you more. And I have said that um, before. Where I, this is my favorite Ash out of all mm-hmm. the Ashes in, in the agree. franchise, <laughs> and I and I'm with you. I think um, Bruce is at the top of his game. If, if there is such a thing, like I, I can't imagine him doing this any better. It is he is just such so much fun to watch, and no one can deliver a one liner like Bruce Campbell, and no one could have had their head up a cadaver's ass and made it funny. Hey, hey, I like still Bruce use. I st- He's in the upper echelon of physical comedy. Um, exactly. Upper exactly. I still use the "give me some sugar, baby" line once in a while oh, to this day. Of course. <laughs> so what we're saying is, I mean, you, you could take all the ashes and dig a big hole and toss them in the ash hole, and the current ash would rise to the top. <laughs> You said it, I did it. What? You just <laughs> all right then. Um, that being said, about about your ash. Um, you know, really, it's great chemistry amongst the entire cast, though, that brings the story to life. And that's something that really shines I, through. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear because, in, you know, I am so grateful and so lucky um, to be on a show where that's the case, where we all just genuinely like each other and enjoy doing scenes with each other and enjoy spending time outside of filming with each other, which I always find crazy when I think about it in hindsight like wow we were shooting like 15 hour days six days a week but then on the one night we had to ourselves we were always hanging out um and and it was so it it really has become this very dysfunctional fun family Mm -hmm. um but but I think that is also a little bit of the secret sauce um because they couldn't have known that we were all gonna just gel um and uh I mean with Ray and I even when when we didn't even meet until after we had both read it in the trades that we both got cast. Sure. And we took it upon ourselves to, to meet up, which is also crazy because, you know, uh, we had every scene together in season one. And obviously, like, yep. Pablo and Kelly have this on-again, off-again kind of will-they-won't-they thing. 
but we never even had a chemistry read together to see if we were going to gel. So, like, they, this is how good that Sam and, and they just uh, threw you into are, it. Uh, that they just knew somehow yeah. it was going to work. Um, and I have to say, like, because I've been in situations where that's not the case, where there's mm-hmm. always at least, like, one jerk, you know? Sure. Who just doesn't want to be there, whatever. And I can't tell you what a thrill it is to not only be doing this as my job and finally getting to do what I've been working my whole life to do and get to do every genre. I get to play with every possible genre um, every episode, and I have a blast doing that. But I get to work with, like, Lucy Wallace and Bruce Campbell and Ted Raimi and Lee Majors. It sounds like one of those questions Oprah would throw out of, like, if you could have lunch with anyone, who would it be? <laughs> you know, like, I, this, I have to sometimes, like, pinch myself in the cafeteria when we're at lunch. Like, am I really, like, sitting and eating with these people? This is insane. Well, I was going to um, ask you. And I, I, I still get starstruck uh, uh, here and there, and it's, it's pretty cool. I'm very, very lucky, and I'm here to tell you that they're as awesome as you hope they are. That's I, I was going to ask you, what, what was it like to work with veteran actors like Lee Majors and Bruce Campbell? Did you, oh, was there a lot of, did you learn a lot? It's a dream. It's a, is it what? Did you, did you find yourself really also learning a lot from them along the way? I mean, it's, even if you're like, nah, I'm good. I know everything there is to know, which no one does. Mm-hmm. You, you couldn't help yourself but learn because they just, they just radiate this presence. And I mean, both of those guys and, and Lucy included, I mean, Bruce can get it in one take. Mm-hmm. He's, he, I've never seen anybody do anything like he, I've never seen anyone do anything like that. He, like, nailed it in one take. And the only reason they do another take or two is, like, if he wants to throw out some, some improv lines or just sure. whatever for a different angle. Like, he's that good. And Lee Majors, I mean, he walked on set and the whole set just elevated. Like, it, it was incredible to watch how they carry themselves on set. Um, you know, yes, we are having fun and, yes, we love what we're doing. But it is actually really hard work. So everyone takes this job very seriously. Um, and watching... We, like, you know, if let's say they're changing the camera angle and you have 20 minutes, you know, usually you're like, okay, I just want a minute to regroup after that very intense scene. I'm going to go back to my trailer for a second with some music, whatever. Yep. We would just stay on set. Wow, He's dedication. Like, like, never never got anything. Like, he never asked for anything. And I'm like, damn, what a pro. Yeah. But like, just, I, it was incredible. Um, and, uh, yeah, I learned from them every day, especially, like, what I'm really learning from Bruce is, how to find that sweet spot mm-hmm. of the, the comedy and the horror. Because it, like, the, it's there in the writing, and the writers do an incredible job of that. But they're, really, I've never seen, I keep saying I've never seen, with, with Bruce Campbell, he can be in a scene and be like the action hero guy, get hit in the face with a pipe, mm-hmm. do a physical comedy gag, then throw out a one-liner, and then, you know, be running again from a, from a dead... Like it's, it, it, it's such a fine line to not go too much in one direction sure. and to not play the joke. Yeah. Like, you know, when you try, it's the people experience this in real life. You know, whenever you try to be funny, when you're like telling your friends a story, you're like, yeah. oh, this is, is going to make them up. It always bombs. It always you're does. Ne- it's never funny. Yeah. Um, so you got to find that sweet spot of playing it honestly. Um, and because he knows his role inside and out. And like we said, is like the greatest ash ever at uh, this, this ash. The girdle wearing act. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just learned. Yeah. I just learned. I, I just watch and learn. And um, as he and, emerges uh, from his ash hole. His <laughs> ash yeah. Hole. There, yeah. <laughs> oh man. There it is. Um, FCC is gonna be all over you, buddy. It's all I said over ash. You. <laughs> I know. That's, I'm joking with <laughs> oh you. Oh my god. Don't we can make... do a whole show on, on, the, on the puns. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Well, we have no, Dana. <laughs> where are you from in Ohio? Youngstown, I bet. I am from I am from Youngstown. Yes. Uh, are you really? Well, my well, two o- well, my ex wife well, and my two older. I'm in Ohio. I'm in suburban Cleveland. My check shut this up. Out. My ex wife teaches, and my two older children went to school in Poland. Oh, why? I went to board then. I knew it. Over. Right Let's next door. Oh my god. Very cool. That's another crazy. another it's Midwestern. World. Yep, it surely a is. Small world indeed. Yes, wow, absolutely. Look at that. Well, we got a question for this you. It's really funny. Then you'll appreciate this. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead. No, not oh, no, a problem. I was just going to say. I've had a lot of people tweeting me um, after the second episode with the pop machine, and I kept saying like, "Give me my pop, give me my effing pop, whatever." Yep. And people are like, "Did you?" 
Did you know that that's what, did, well, how did you know to say pop? Did it, like, well, people were questioning, like, you didn't even, you don't even call it that. It's no. like, yo, dude, no. I grew up in Ohio. It's always been pop. That's right. It's always, pop. In fact, had, Ted and I talked about that. It's always pop. That's right. Always. Te- Ted Ramey. Pop Day Friday growing up. That's like, right. My parents let us have pop one day a week, which was Friday when we had pizza. Pop day. So anyway. We'll That's right. It is pop in Michigan, and it's pop in Ohio. Yep, and, I, and, and it's also pop in Minnesota, by the way. Minnesota. Minnesota oh. up here. Up here in Duluth, it is still pop. See, there you go. Pop wins. That's right. Pop mm-hmm. does win. Now, we asked Ray this question, being that we are the Hall- Halloween season, and you know we are talking with you, hey, and this is a paranormal show primarily. Do you have any ghost stories? Have you ever had any brushes <gasps> with a paranormal? Yes. Really? Yes. Funny you ask. Because listen, no, I'm very, I get, like, I totally, I'm starting to pace now because I love talking about this stuff because I have been, like, an avid ghost story person since I was little. Um, like, would, I read all the Goosebumps books. I never missed an episode of You Afraid of Dark. I grew up loving horror. But ghost stories, I've had many, I feel like many encounters. People might not believe them, but it's true. Specifically, there's one that ties into the show that I can tell you um, where we shot at a haunted um, uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say what it is, but I'll say sure. a haunted asylum. Okay. Um, and it was haunted, and we're shooting in New Zealand, and it was haunted um, because apparently, like, in the when it was open in the early turn of the century, um, they were murdering patients, and, like, their patients were getting pregnant, and they really? were murdering babies. I don't know. That's what we were told. Ooh. But I tell, I'm telling you what, not, there was so much weird stuff that happened. Um, like, I, like, stuff that, like, you could try and come up with an excuse, but yeah. no, like, Pictures that were strongly mounted to the wall by the art department. Like, I mean, screwed into the wall. They're not going anywhere, even in an earthquake. And yep. during a deadite scene, um, a, a deadite was screaming. And randomly, the nun picture of all pictures, the really? nun picture, Ooh, flew off creepy. the wall and smashed. And it was like, by the way, like 30 feet in the air. No one was around it. No one was even in that area. Smack. Weird. Um, I got pushed by a ghost. Wow. Bruce Campbell saw it. I got pushed by a ghost. He can say I tripped because I do trip every day on set, but I got pushed twice. It was a double push, and I felt it, and I thought it was Bruce because, mm-hmm. because I was walking down the hallway. He was sitting in a chair, and all of a sudden, someone comes up and shoves me hard, and I like was like, what the? And then it shoved again, and I completely bit it and fell on my face. Wow. And I'm like, Bruce, what the? And I look, and he was sitting in a chair, and he goes, enjoy the trip. <laughs> and I'm like, I go, dude, did you just push me? He's like, uh, no. And I'm like, did you Chair. <laughs> I know, no, no, exactly. But so I can, I know, uh, talent, I'm telling you, they're in the back of my neck stood up. But also I've had many encounters with Ouija boards. I did that very, when I was very young. And I was, when I was 11 with some friends, we were playing with a Ouija board. Um, and yes, I had seen the exorcist. Um, and my friend Christie's hair was in a ponytail. And we were talking to this ghost Monday. This is mm. legit. You know I can't make this up. Yep. And we were like, Monday, give us a sign that you're here. Give us a sign. Because, you know, that's what 11-year-olds, that's what you yeah, want to well, do. Exactly. You want to see the sign. Exactly. Yeah. Her ponytail, it was, we were all there. In the, there was no one standing around. It was just the four of us sitting on my family room floor. Her ponytail went up and down like someone came and batted it. And we all saw it. And we all freaked out. And then my mom came and yelled at us. But, oh, like, creepy. But creepy I'm stuff. telling you. Ghosts are real. I, I know too many stories. I've seen too many things. Well, then you need story, a ghost push me. Then you need to catch up on some episodes of After Hours AM if you want to hear good By ghost stories. Golly, stuff. you do. <laughs> you want yes, to hear some I young do. lady. And you can I absolutely come do. back on, and we can talk ghosts. Yeah, we'll stretch it out and expand it. I would love that so much. Yeah, we'll even let you sit in. We'll get we'll get a real exorcist to come on with us to talk to you. Oh, my God, that freaks me out. <laughs> yes, I would love it. I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be a great time. We'll get- I wanted to add, because, I, of course, we're out of time, because this 20 minutes was like a... Uh, it's like a bullet, man. What I wanted to add was um, that on the serious side of the show, where you're dealing with the loss of your family, your parents, and all that, that is absolutely bone serious and touching and Mm. you what you said earlier about walking that line between all these different genres within the same show is absolutely true and you pull them all off very very well 
Oh, well, I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. I'm learning from the best, and uh, and I'm loving playing Kelly, and I'm very excited for you to see where uh, her journey goes this season because it is pretty um, intense, and, uh, you know, she's out for revenge, and she has blinders on man, and she will not rest until she has every deadite head hanging above her on a string of canopy lights. Wow. Uh, but sometimes that can... Uh, Sometimes that can cloud her judgment, so you'll have to see what happens and, um, and as she begins to sort of forge her own path, what that means for, for Kelly and what that means for the Ghost Beater. So, Definitely. Um, there is so much more in store for you this season, and I'm like, I'm very, very, very. That is huge. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, yes. that's my fandom. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, fandom God. is huge. Dana, no. thank you Dana, so much. Dana, thank you and so yes, much. We would love to talk to you at much greater length. But this was so fun to have the, the three of you. It was like 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So we got a really nice kind of overview and different perspectives. What was fascinating was how many things you guys are completely independently, completely talking to us on your own. And you, you said many of the same yeah. things. Yeah. About the show and about well, what I mean, because we really do love each other. I could do a whole show just talking about how much I love Ted Ramey and Ray Santiago. Oh, yeah. um, I think I'm very excited, uh, and I'm sure that that, um, what you see for their characters, and for everyone's character, I feel like everyone has such a great storyline that uh, this season, and you're never going to see it. There's going to be more, like, there's going to be more Evil Dead moments, and especially for fans like you who have been with us the whole time for the last 30 years, um, or with them, I should say. Uh, there are so many good Easter eggs for you. Oh, I, I would good. like to be there to see your reaction. So uh, enjoy, and I hope uh, I can talk to you again. And, and absolutely, and we'll see, we'll see where, where it's shaping up for you guys. Yeah, we'll have, br- to have you back. Yes, we'll have, we'll have you back. We'll talk ghosts next t- next time, though. <laughs> yes, ghosts. <laughs> Thanks again That's so much for coming time. on. Thank you, Dana. Well, thank really you guys enjoyed so much it. for having me. Bye. Congratulations on the show. Thank you, and I hope I remain your mid-level crush for a oh. while. <laughs> Ever expanding. <laughs> Ever expanding. Right. Mid-level that being crush. said, everybody, take care of each other. Hold on, we got to wrap this thing up. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for listening to After Hours AM. On behalf of myself, Joel Sturgis, Mr. Eric Olson, take care of each other, love each other, and see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to this edition of After Hours AM, and please remember to like us on Facebook and also follow us over on Twitter. 